Tell me secrets. your secrets. What kind secret. of podcast is this? <laughs> <laughs> Top water. <laughs> Read your back over there. Right, well, <laughs> that reminds me right. of that sideline. That sweaty, was that sweaty ball? Oh, with uh, that Alec Baldwin. <laughs> that microphone reminds me of that. <laughs> Uh, let me see. I think my phone's hooked up onto this in case somebody <laughs> wants us to call. Let me just see this really quick. When's Come the last on. time you were kayaking? Ooh. <laughs> a year ago? You live already or no? Yeah, yeah, we're live right now. So you can go on and share it. We've got About a year ago. two people on here. So as you guys are coming in, just feel free to drop your name there, add a comment so we know who's watching. Uh, or if you want to remain anonymous, that's fine too. So, <laughs> All we, right, we don't bite. We don't bite. Victor bites. We just don't. <laughs> under we under just, Apollo. <laughs> feel the thump. Uh, well, it's under Apollo Fishing on YouTube. Oh, okay. so you got to go to YouTube and then, uh, gotcha. and then from there you've got to share it to Facebook. So, if anybody's already watching. I just want to let John know that is Sam. He just shaved. It is. So, man. so John know that is Sam. He just shaved. It is. So, man. so John know that is Sam. He just shaved. It is. So, man. so John know that is Sam. He just shaved. It is. So, man. so John know that. Oh, you know what? It's uh, it's this this uh this thing here. Let me just connect it. Or oh, can you share it on your page then? Or oh, sorry, on the um, my phone's hooked up to this uh recording device, and so. Um, that, was the, that was like it was like playing it the same right so it's like the phone was like it like anything the audio on this thing goes it plays on that and then it goes back and forth and that cycle and it never ends so so uh, we got a few minutes here guys so we'll just uh we're just just give us a few seconds to get started here we're gonna just kind of get a few more people out here share this uh on our pages and uh before we move forward Good work if i could figure out how to put this guy on mute so, all right. Where everybody's playing on their phone right now. I know we're <laughs> trying to get some, like, oh, we got a we got a little bit of time here, so let's get this out here and let's get this uh, shared accordingly and uh, share it to all your groups and uh, share it to all the people so we can uh, they can tune in from Facebook or wherever they're at. Edgar's in the house. Aaron Ochoa's. <laughs> What's up, Edgar? Uh, oh, and we got some questions coming in already. So we'll, uh, we'll we'll answer your questions here in a little while, Aaron, as we get once we get started. So yeah, as you guys are tuning in, feel free just to type in your questions. We'll be reading them on throughout the uh, the, the the podcast. So I actually I went fishing today with Edgar. So uh, we did uh, we did pretty good. So uh, him and I walked up on a, on some tr uh, on some tailing redfish. It was it was pretty exciting. But uh, I couldn't push the fly out out there. I was throwing the musk out, and I just <laughs> and it was uh, it was heartbreaking. I couldn't get him. That was always fun, or Victor creeping up on some tailing reds on the kayak. Oh, yeah. All right. So, no, uh, let's see here. I, ah, Fabian shared it. Maybe I can share it too. And then I think Victor's sharing it. Rudy shared it. Victor is uh, sharing it too, huh? All right, guys. I think we'll go ahead and get started here. So, all right. I'm recording now. So, uh, let's go ahead and get started. So, uh, uh, welcome back to our podcast. This is our live interview podcast. So the way what we're doing here is uh, we're doing these live interviews, and uh, and then we have our our high school buddies or my high school kids, uh, my cousins. Really, they're uh, they're they're our little slave workers, and and they're putting in the time and effort to chop this up, edit it uh, for us a more condensed, where we don't have all this fluff, where we're sharing stuff on on the phone, and uh, and then after that we'll come up with a shorter video, and then the audio is what we'll put up on our podcasting platform. So. Uh, a lot of people have been asking us, you know, when are your when are your podcasting coming out? And uh, and and really like kind of the, the strategy I've been given is like wait till you have three or four before you go and upload. So this is number yeah. episode number three on the Apollo fishing, and uh, and this week we'll actually be recording episode one of the Seven Day Addiction. So we'll talk more about that at the yeah. end. But um, but yeah, so so today we're actually today we're here in the, in the studio to talk about kayak fishing. And so, so I'm actually, I've gone kayaking one time and I, I had a really bad experience <laughs> and I, I think a lot of people are in that same thing and I'm kind of scared to do it, right? It's just like a bad experience. It's just like, I'll never do this again. But after meeting Victor and talking to Rudy and kind of seeing the stuff that I do, I think, uh, maybe, maybe I'll try it out a little, um, it's in, fun, in the future, bro. So. It's so much fun. <laughs> so, so yeah, so uh, let's go ahead and get started guys. So here, uh, it's Sam Robles, Victor Ramos, Rudy Salon. And Fabian Hernandez. All right, Fabian. So, guys, we're going to start talking about uh, kayak fishing. So, 
I guess uh, let, let's start. Uh, so what, if you guys don't know, both Victor and Rudy uh, have a big, uh, a lot of experience around kayak fishing. That's where they got started. Actually, that's how they met each other. So it's yeah, crazy yeah. how like the, the stars and everything align, how people cross paths. And these guys actually, from what I understand, they they, they actually met while they were out kayaking. Yeah, as a matter of <laughs> fact, it was at Holly Beach. It was at Holly, Holly Beach. Beach. Yeah. Was Holly Beach. So it's crazy. So now, so they're met out there on the water, on their kayaks, <laughs> yeah. out of all places. And then... Uh, and now they, they they established a passion for uh for, for kayaking. So uh yes, so so let's get started. So let's uh so uh let's start off with Rudy. Rudy, how long have you been a uh, kayak fishing? Uh, I've been kayaking for the last eight years. Okay. Uh been all the way through Pelican from the very beginning, uh up until Hobie now. And 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 I'm very, very, very happy with my 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 current kayak. But I've been through all the, the systems of kayaks and you're like, oh, I'm just gonna start and use it for fun and then you're like well maybe i can fish off of this and then you start fishing off of it and you're like well yeah there's a lot of shit i need so <laughs> yeah. sorry there's a lot of stuff i need yeah. so um, that's the way anything is like even just like a boat right like oh you know i spent 40 50 grand on a boat all right now it's just I'm, the beginning and yeah, then you got to go buy this this that by the time you know it, you're you know another 10 grand and everything so just and, uh, and then every other board you see you're like oh i want that <laughs> oh i want that it's the envy, right so it's yeah, just like let's well, trying to level up so so eight years, kind of, kind of seeing all the kayaks that are out there. Uh, how about yourself, Victor? How long were you kayaking? I think I've been kayaking for about seven, or was kayaking for about <laughs> seven years. Uh, I haven't kayaked maybe in about a year now. Uh, and like Rudy, I started up in the Pelican, uh, worked my way to a Jackson kayak, and then worked my way to um, a Hobie, and then worked my way to a boat. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but kayaking is, is something that is very different from going out on a boat. It's yeah. just it's a different different thing well that's what we're, we're here to talk about right so we're, we're trying to get uh people that are watching us and our followers kind of get them let them you know they may be interested maybe they're trying to take that first step they need some guidance on what to take uh the other thing that stood out though is kind of uh so it sounds like two things stood out when both of you guys were introducing yourselves is first of all you guys started kind of with a similar type kayak so we'll start there it sounds like that's some pretty common grounds and this is before you guys met each other or knew each other so it seems like maybe there's some tribal knowledge in terms of where to start uh, the second thing was, uh, you know, Victor says he uh, evolved or, you know, transitioned from kayaking to boats. I'd like to talk, go touch that a little bit later. But uh, but right now, let's start off with, you know, getting started. You know, so you both said you started off with the Pelican. So tell us about that kayak. So Pelican is a, a good starter kayak. You know, somebody's asking a question right now. Aaron's asking, you know, what is the best kayaking for a beginner? I started off with the Pelican, but I would say a, a pescador would be... A great kayak it's a kayak that you can start off with and you can actually upgrade or put some stuff into it and it's a good kayak it's a it's a single mold instead of a, a pelican being a two mold that you press together okay so what happened with my pelican was the, the, the tighter you tie those straps so it doesn't fall off your truck you have a chance of making that seam so, so there's separate. a seam around there's it so it's a little bit right. okay yeah, the way it's fused two together piece, two pieces yeah, right. okay but they start off at about 270 yeah you know right. so when you're just getting started like you said there's gonna be a kayak gonna be a life jacket it's gonna be a bunch of other things that add up so a pelican is a great starter boat um i would at this point say if you can you know spend another 100 bucks 250 bucks and get a pescador that's a great kayak for the price man so, now, so, that, so that's where it starts at cost wise right 279 then the pelican go ahead Pedro. yeah that, that's the question i wanted to ask like is it a pelican because of the cost or is it a pelican because it's user friendly for the beginner kayaker and both uh First cost, uh, you know, when I was getting into it, I didn't want to spend uh, $2,000 for a hobby and then realize, ah, this ain't for me. It's like Sam said, he went one time and then he was like, yeah, <laughs> you know, so there goes two, two grand. And you're going to sell it and you're not going to get two grand. Right. So you yeah. start off with something that's basic, something that gets you in there. And a Pelican, I think it's, I think the one I had was a 14, I think it was a 14 footer and it was, it was nice. It was, it was good. Then I got into the Pescador, which was uh, like a 13 and it just felt a little bit better. But so you started with the price. same kayak as well, too? Yeah, I started with a 12-foot uh, Pelican, and uh, probably two trips in, my wife's like, I want that one. You get another one. <laughs> so I upgraded. Uh, I ended up in an Ascend. Okay. Um, and I really enjoyed it because it was yeah. a standing platform. Yeah, those are um, really wide kayaks. Yeah, they've got, they've got like a 33-inch uh, width, so you're able to walk around the kayak freely and not have to worry too much about balancing yourself. And for a beginner... I feel that's quite important because their yep. their their main worry is losing one losing all their equipment yep. because they don't have a disregard. <laughs> that was my experience. <laughs> they they have a disregard for their own safety. So right. they you know somebody that falls over for you know in their kayak they don't think about themselves. They're like. 
where's all my gear? And yeah, they start reaching machine. out. Where's all, where's all my stuff? They start reaching out into the water and start picking up their, you know, their that's, mailbox and, <laughs> and, and, and things out of the water. It's not even theirs, you know? So that's kind of what happens. And I, I really enjoyed the Ascend. I, I, I went in it. Um, I even put a trolling motor on it, <laughs> which is a horrible experience. Like we can go over that later. Sure. Uh, I know there's a lot of guys out there with trolling motors. It, it, it can be the greatest thing. It can be, oh, worst, yeah. it can be your worst enemy. Oh yeah. Uh, Victor had an SUV uh, that that he had a trolling motor on. He can give you plenty of stories as well. There was a standing platform he had. That's how yeah, I met get a little flat stalker, and <laughs> flat stalker, uh, yeah. you're like, oh, these things are awesome. And you put a motor on it, and you go out there, and then the motor dies or the yeah. battery dies. That's how. <laughs> that oh happens. shit! That's how. That that's how I met Rudy. <laughs> 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 and I think, what and I, do? I think we, we did that one time <laughs> yeah. too. Yeah, I had like, hey, bro, oh, man, man, yeah, it's. So, so the first variable is so the first consideration is price, right? So it sounds like around three hundred dollars you're going to get in at your first uh, that uh, your your first kayak, and then from there, I mean, so, so how many different kayaks can you choose around that price range? Or is that pretty much the, the, the really one that's out there, the Pelican? Uh, there's maybe about two or three yeah. around that price range. Okay, so, so so outside of price, what are other variables you might be considering? If you're tall, small, big, wide, oh, you're about you definitely got to yeah. consider that. You know, you okay. got to definitely consider you know your build. You don't want to go with a 12 foot kayak if you're six, six foot three, three yeah, you yeah. know, 280 pounds. I bet mean, that ain't gonna work for you. You're gonna have to spend the money up front and say, hey, I need to get something a little bit better. That's, you know, it's like a boat, it has a weight capacity. Yeah, yeah. You cannot just go and buy, hey, I'm gonna buy this. But say, they, hey, they, they do also away? specialize in big boy kayaks. I oh, know yeah. that Jackson has a big rig. Uh, it's called the big rig, okay. and it's made specially for them big boys. Yeah. Um, it's got their stacks way- coming out of it. <laughs> 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 their, their weight capacity is a little higher. Okay. Yeah. Like Six, 700 pounds. Yeah, I think that's hard. right. So, so the other thing is, uh, so, okay, so now we have an idea in terms of what, what we're looking for in a kayak. And hey, what's up, kayak. son? I can see you watching, bro. <laughs> hey, it's almost time for you to go to, go to bed. Bro. No, no, watch the whole thing, man. You can go to bed. Watch, okay, the, whole watch the whole video. <laughs> uh, so, uh, uh, <laughs> TJ says he's ran these little kayaks. Things. Uh, TJ. Yeah, uh, I've, I've, TJ knows what it's about. Uh, he's been in one of my 10 foot uh, oh, tarpons. <laughs> uh, it, was pretty, it was pretty <laughs> sketchy. <right? laughs> uh, he'll tell you some of the stories getting dragged around, right. getting dragged around, getting dragged around. Do you have Island. pictures of that? I should be. <laughs> yeah, they are. <laughs> Sorry, TJ. <laughs> he was running yeah, low rider. We're going to add it to our thumbnail here. That'll he was be running a low rider right there. Low rider. It was. He had the nose up. So here in the valley, like so, so I mean, I, I personally, I, I can think of maybe one store where you can buy a kayak, maybe two stores. So I mean, I'm thinking Academy and maybe Bass Pro. Is there any other places here in the valley where you can? That's get that's about Dix, right. Dix has Dix, them now. Dix has them now. Yeah. Um, okay. And you know who's been having them now? Um, Tractor Supply. Oh yeah, they carry kayaks too. Yeah, I from do. time yeah. to time you'll find you'll find some sit on top kayaks. Yeah, okay, um, I I do have an issue. There's I I know that there's a lot of people that that ask about sit in kayaks and sit on top kayaks. Uh, if you're if you're going out there fishing, try not to get into a sit in kayak. Okay. Uh, it could get very dangerous. Yep. Uh, the water coming in is is a big factor. Um, at least with a you know in, any sit on top kayak. If water starts to get in your hole, you'll feel it. Okay. You'll, you'll be able to make your way back. Yeah, you'll feel a little lopsided in your kayak. You'll be able to paddle back. We got uh, Aaron asking, you know, about the Ascent, and, and obviously Rudy has uh, had one before. Um, so if you could touch a little bit on that for um, for Aaron. Yeah, he's, he's asking, asking about the Ascent kayaks. He's thinking about uh, get, getting one. Okay, yeah. the I had the FS-128T, a great stand-up kayak, Aaron. Uh if you're looking for something that you can stand up and be comfortable in, they've upgraded their seats. They've upgraded their molds. Uh, they've put some gear tracks on there, uh, allows for extra accessories. They're great starter kayaks. If you have a little bit extra money to kind of spend, uh, if you're, you know, six hundred dollars range, right? Yeah. About about six, six, six to $800. Yeah, best gets, pro shop. Gets you set up. Um, and it's a great, Great fishing platform. Now, like I, I think said. the new Ascents have that swivel seat. Yes, you can turn. Yeah, so that's so, pretty neat. Yeah, they've got they've, they've added a lot of features now that the kayak world's kind of been growing so much. Okay. Um, everybody's trying to step up their game. So now, Aaron, I I know that um, Rudy mentioned stand up kayak. Don't stand up right away. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't stand up right away. You know, go out, use uh, it, yes. you know, work your way to that. Trust right. me, I've I've when I first started, I did that, and I ended up falling a couple of times, and then I realized I can just. Fish sitting down. <laughs> I don't know how to stand up. 
so, but it's so, a different world when you were standing up. Yeah, yes. So we talked about different models, kind of where you can get them, you know, kind of entry level. You're looking somewhere between maybe 300 to, I heard 600, so three to 700 roughly to get started just for the kayak. What else do you need to go buy if you go into the store to, to, to get into kayak? My number one is a PFD. A PFD, yeah. yeah. I, I, I wouldn't talk about rods, reels. I wouldn't talk about no. any other accessory on a kayak other than a PFD. Is, are you required to wear a PFD? Absolutely. When yes. you're a kayak? It's mandatory that it's on your boat. Uh, it's actually, it's not mandatory that you wearing, wearing it, but okay, it's within, be within arm's length. And and outside of the actual PFD, do you have to have just that, that one life jacket or do you have to have the, the other throw? No, out no, no, jacket? no, it's, it's just, just your life just, jacket. Just and they jacket. do require to have a, your whistle on the jacket Okay. or a, a, an audio, an aud- kind yeah. of like an audio device. Yeah. Okay. So, so you go in, you get your kayak, you get a live jacket. Uh, what are other things you need to buy? Anchor system. Anchor. Anchor so, system. So what's, what's a uh, what's a? So you have an anchor. an anchor trolley. Um, it allows you to position your anchor uh, throughout the kayak from the nose to the butt to allow you for positioning so when you're anchored okay. down. Yeah. Okay. And all, all entry kayaks will have that too. Or uh, no. None of them separate. come with it. Okay. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a kit that you would have to buy separate and, and okay. actually put onto your kayak. Some come with the paddle already, uh, but usually those are. And they're not that entry, heavy. Yeah, they're, they're entry heavy. level kayaks. Yeah, yeah and they're, they're heavy, heavy, like like Victor says. They're heavy. So Victor. you that's one thing you can upgrade. Uh, maybe a little bit later on, you can upgrade first. Get in there, get the fuel for it. But a life jacket for sure. Yes. Uh, you know your your whistle for sure, and at least a throw anchor, uh, like a regular five pound. Yeah, they have a five pound round anchor. Or okay. uh, I mean, since since we're in the valley uh, and it blow, I mean, if you've ever been out there fishing, you know that <laughs> anywhere. Anywhere uh, on any given day, day, it's going to be from fifteen to twenty-five. Yeah. Uh, a five a five pound anchor might bump around. Um, it's going to slow you down. It's so I, slow. I use I use a ten pound just for comfort levels. Yeah. I ain't moving. Or you're pretty swole, man. You can <laughs> or, <laughs> or, you do it you, for the workout. <laughs> he's just a ten pound anchor or anchor or he, or he takes TJ. <laughs> <laughs> so I see that, that he has a. Um, he's asking about mother shipping. I know that there's a lot of questions uh, regarding mother shipping. Um, so, I, so, so what is mothership? I do a lot of mothershipping with, with, with TJ, uh, um, we get his boat. We take my kayak, we put it on the boat. Okay. Uh, he takes me out, uh, drops me off and about eight hours, they cheat. Uh, eight hours later, he picks me up. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, it's just a way of getting out to some areas that normally right. you wouldn't be able to Absolutely. without having to paddle or pedal All day. Three, three hours <laughs> to get to. As a matter of fact, I think DJ offers that in his guide service, right? Yes. He uh, a, a TJ Boom has a guide service, uh, stay blessed charters, and they do offer mother shipping. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, so uh, his new boat um, is is up to f- four kayaks and fit on it. Wow. So yeah. it's pretty spacious. It's got a lot of room. Because um, it, it is tiring, you know. Yeah, oh, kayaking is tiring, bro. Yeah. Don't you, think it's, you, you it's pedal, not. you know. I mean, we talked about pedaling. I, I I can't run on the treadmill for more than five minutes without getting tired. So I can imagine this is you know some pretty intense cardio. Now, it's now a now different. It's also, it is a different. It's a different <clears throat> yeah. style because there are pedal and paddle. So okay. it just depends on what kind of kayak you are running. Okay, um, but for an entry level, we're talking paddle, paddle right? Yeah. yeah, or I call it chingale. Yeah, That's what I call it hey, chingale. <laughs> yeah, chingale your, your shoulders are going to be pretty swole. But yeah. even at the at, at the beginning, I know the first time I did it was really like you don't feel it going out. No. <laughs> you're coming going out. Yeah. Yeah. You're excited. You're excited. You're excited. You're excited. You're excited. Stop. Whatever. You this around, is easy. Like, oh, shit, I can't see anything. So the coming back is hard. Yeah. You know, I think the first time I went with this guy, we did like 12 miles, something like that. Wow. I was like, what the heck's wrong with you? Yeah, he took advantage of you. Yeah, he did. Yeah. I mean, oh. and, and then, it was an easy day. You know, so, it, it, so going out is definitely an easy thing. So I think for beginners that are going on their own, don't ever do that. I don't, yeah, think, go out don't ever own. go on your own. Yeah. You know, go with somebody. But even when I finally, I think, decided to go on my own without him, you know, I still made that mistake and I took off and I think I went a little further than I could. I made it back safely and everything, you know, it wasn't a big deal, but it was a lot tougher, you know, so, but so I do want to, I want to do want to get there. So, so kind of, kind of just so you guys understand where I'm thinking, what I'm thinking here is I want to start, you know, someone who wants to get into kayaking, all right, they go into Academy and this is what they come out with. And then, you know, now what, you know, how do they go about getting on the water? So, so, so if we could just kind of, Finish up here. You, know, you go into the academy. You got your anchor. You got your paddle. Is it worth buying an upgrade, an expensive paddle, or just kind of a um, cheap one? Your first couple of trips, I would say, just take your paddle out. Take yeah. What okay. you got. Um. Get used to it. See if it's for you. Okay. Um. Sometimes, like you said, I mean, you may have a bad experience and, yeah. <laughs> and may not ever want to do it again. Yep. You know, so that some of those paddles can cost up to two hundred, three hundred dollars. Yeah. You know, all carbon right. fiber and all this. this Are they worth it? Oh, oh yeah, yes. Yeah. Oh yes. Oh, yeah. yes. Yeah. Once you you're ask, out there, you're it's, it's worth. You it. ask yeah. any guy that's a paddle guy that 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 does BTB or offshore fishing, and 
their their first upgrade was a paddle. Okay. Yeah. Their first upgrade. Mainly the weight. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, weight makes okay. a big difference. Yeah. And, so, and then they also have lengths. So they also have different oh, lengths yeah. for your and different bends in the want. kayak for so is that uh, based on like your size or is that based on based, the based on size and kayak okay mm -hmm. based on yeah. size and kayak and so i mean if you go to academy right i mean i, I don't think they have a very skilled per or i wouldn't imagine i wouldn't expect them to have someone who's this is how you size a paddle so, right. so quickly do you, is there any rules of thumbs in terms of how you size uh for me it was if you're gonna do us like my kayak the when i bought the cuda that's when i actually upgraded my paddle when i got into the cuda i didn't i didn't have one a good one when i was in the pelican or a pescador okay right so with the cuda you had the option of a high seat or a low seat so that's what determined for me that i needed a longer paddle because i was going to be going higher okay so i needed to be able to get more water uh, friction when i was going to be using my uh, my paddle on it so for for me it was that it was the higher i was going i needed a longer a longer one and for me, it was uh, when I transitioned over to a Hobie, I was fishing some shallow water. So I did a lot of stand up fishing okay. and I realized that my paddle wasn't really as I was standing up. It wasn't really giving me enough room to kind of get through my stroke. Got it. OK, so th just a little longer paddle worked out great. OK, so you definitely start off with these first ones. And then as you kind of evolve and kind of figure out your fishing techniques and how they may change, you may consider upgrading. Uh, but definitely, if it's, it's, it would be something, one of the first things you upgrade. So, so. That's a great idea, TJ. Um, you know, Town Lake, if you want to get into kayaking, try it out before you go out in the open water. Oh, Town Lake. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, uh, that's a good idea. So, so where is Town Lake at? Here in Farmer's Park. Oh, yeah, Farmers Park. Uh, okay. I know that that uh, in Edinburgh now they have uh, Tres Lagos um, right. over here on Monte Cristo. They, they have three big lakes where uh, they do welcome kayaks. Um, PFD is required, but... It, it is a chance to get on the water and just test and, and balance so, and, and and so what do you do like you, you borrow someone's kayak or you just go out did they, they have kayaks there you no they don't have kayaks that you can rent but but if you have access to a kayak okay. or you want to borrow one you know yeah no i think it's good man actually you know if you guys in the future wanted to put something together hey we're gonna have a kayak day here and people come out here we're just gonna teach people basic i know and i know that the uh, fireman's park or town lake they have it they, they have, have a kayak day Oh yeah, they do. Yeah, okay. where you can rent a kayak from them. Yeah, and they also have like little paddle boats that you can and you can you know uh, rent from them and go out there. I don't know how good their kayaks are, but right. I mean it's something to at least get your feet wet. Literally, see if you can balance yeah. yourself. Yeah. It might might get you more than just your feet wet. Like, <laughs> all right. So so definitely all right. So you go out there, you you come out with a kayak, you come out with a paddle, an anchor, a life jacket. Uh, I won't touch on uh, on too much on the fishing gear yet right now. I mean, that's I, I think basically any any kind of fishing gear you're using right now would work the same. Yeah. Uh, and later, you know, as your your techniques go, you can definitely get into some places that are a lot different oh. than you could on a boat, right? Yeah, so, absolutely. so you just got to fish your 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 equipment, your jig heads, your lures, whatever you're throwing berries based on that. Uh, the only thing I've the only thing I've seen is kind of with rods, and I, I'm talk talk about it here briefly. I've seen kayakers; they like the short nubs on there, or maybe that's just my perception on there. Oh, you're absolutely right. So, so um, what's the what's the reason of having a, a rod with a with a short? Uh, rear so, rear? so if you're casting sitting down, it becomes a different element. Um, okay. So the, the longer the rod, the, the difference in in the body work gets okay. in the way. As you're waiting, you, know, yeah, you, you can you kind can of cast it aside. The rod, the butt of the rod, kind of goes off to your side. You're fine. But um, another another reason is fighting the fish. If, if you're fighting a fish and it goes around the nose of your boat, you don't want to have a long stocks and catching the jaw. Okay. Uh, you have a short stock, you can kind of lift it up and roll around the front of the nose of the kayak, and you'll be all right and not lose your fish. Good deal. So another reason is when you put the you put it in a rod holder. <laughs> if you have a long butt, it's like your reel's way on top. Okay. And if you if you're gonna troll or something, it that's gonna break. Yeah. yeah. That's gonna okay. break off. Good deal. Uh, and so. and that's a good idea. I mean, I do a lot of trolling uh, in the kayak. That's kind of so. What is trolling on a kayak? So, like, so just explain kind of how you rig that up. Oh man, uh, some of my favorite uh, secrets are rattle traps. I'll, rattle throw, I'll put a rattle trap on the back, and as I'm paddling out to yeah. my spot, I mean, there'll be a couple times you hear it kind of come out of the water and skip, but it'll get right back on this track. And some, <laughs> so of, my, some of my best fish pre light, I've been caught with a rattle trap just really? rolling wow. out to my spot. Just a little rappella, a little yeah. well, just a regular basically what you're trap. doing is you're. you're Going to your spot, say what he said. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go out two miles out. He's got a, you know, rattle trap on the back going down. So he's cruising, getting to his uh, spot. Uh, Otherwise, in the water, just, just, yeah, just, it's just, there, yeah, yeah, and so, you just kind of open up the drag a little bit, and you just wait for that scream. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, so I, I'd never seen that. I wasn't aware of that. So, <laughs> yeah. 
All right. So, so now, you, you know, you go, you get rigged up. And then so like, how do you actually go about getting into the lottery, touching on kind of what Fabian was kind of getting to? How, how do you start doing that? Like, what does that look like? And I like me, I like or like Aaron, I know Aaron's trying to get into it and uh, and, and trying to get started. Like, so uh, obviously we, we talked, we mentioned, you know, don't go out by yourself. So kind of what are things you can do? Um, it, yeah. Uh, if you ask Fabian, Fabian's known me quite a while. I'm I'm a spur of the moment kind of person. So at any random time, I might go fishing, and I do it. A, I do a lot of it on my own. Um, have a game plan. Um, let people know where you're going, yeah. where you're going to be kayaking. And if you let somebody know, hey, you know, I'm going to go to Holly Beach. Go to Holly Beach. Don't go yeah, don't somewhere else. Don't from your yeah. plan. And, so and, and something I, happens, they know, yeah, hey, yeah. Where, where where was Rudy at? Where was he's he last, not coming home where today. Was he last yeah. at? I hadn't seen him, you know, at least I'll but know where you were. One, one great thing about right now is there's a lot of kayak groups, 956 kayak anglers and all this other stuff. I think when we, we started, there kayakers. was really there nothing. There was no groups. Yeah, it right? was all so, boring groups. Yeah, so <laughs> all of a sudden you're like, hey, who can so, I go with? And so when you talk about groups, you're talking about groups you can find on Facebook. Facebook, Facebook. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah Facebook absolutely. Groups. Okay. So that's a, that's a really good, uh, that, that's the key of going out there saying, hey, who can I hook up with? Hey, or, Rudy, or I know you're kayak fishing. You know, where you, when are you going? I'm going this day. Hey, you don't mind if I join you. As I've gone, I've man, gone, I've gone no. with a lot of fishermen from the 956 pages. Uh, you know, so 956, it's 956 kayak. 956 kayak. kayak. Yeah, we'll add a description here on the, on the logo. Yeah, I'll just kind of, you know, one random post. I'm like, hey, headed out Saturday. Anyone want to join? Um, I love a sudden it's like ding 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 ding. Yeah, and, and, and and I'm the type of person that welcomes everybody. I, I'm I'm the reason I'm going out there is to show you how to catch fish. Hopefully I catch fish. Hopefully we all catch fish. You know, not greedy at all with where yeah. I'm going. You know, yeah, I remember you used to doing that at the very beginning where you used to just post, hey, I'm out here at this particular location. And an hour or two later, you would post again. There was two or three guys with you. Yeah. You know, and that, that was cool back then. When, I mean, I say back then, but that's what, four or five years ago, you know, and then it wasn't as popular and you still had people going out there. And yeah. right now yeah. it's just. It's ridiculous. It, yeah, how, it's how growing. Well, man, it's just like, and I don't. I mean, just fishing in general, man. You go out there any day of week. There's, there's tons of people out I there. I mean, just to, to boats, uh, so. touch a little bit on, on how popular it's gotten. You know, uh, Rudy just mentioned the kayak nine five six kayak is having a tournament this coming yeah. weekend. They have what 55, 55 registered kayaks. And when we were doing it, it was like three, or four guys. Well, that's why you yeah, kept winning like, on. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I competed against myself. It's yeah, first, first second, and third, and twenty three anglers. We're gonna win something. Yeah, no, but it's it's a growing community. It's it's so it's it's a community of, of uh, kayakers that you can actually reach out to and you can go out. You know? That sounds and, like a really good way to get started. Just sign up for one of these tournaments, right? So first of all, you're, you're going to be out there with people. They're going to be, you know, in the area as well as you, you're going to, you might meet people as well too, right? Yes, people right. that you might be fishing with for, for the next few times. So, and, and these tournaments are, are not expensive. 25 bucks, 20 was, bucks, 10 bucks. 25, uh, yeah. $25 to enter for the Redfish Division and $10 optional for the crowd. Right. I think it even seems like the, the community itself, because I've seen some guys say, hey, I've never kayak fished before. Can I go and fish this tournament? And I see some of the administrators say, yeah, come along. You know, we do have a group that's going to take beginners even in a tournament. Yeah. You know, yeah. so even if you've never done it before, they're still welcoming these people. And that's just awesome. I mean, yeah. Again, going back to when I first started to have anybody to go and teach you. I mean, it's it's pretty darn cool. And then yeah. I, I think uh, a couple of years ago was it the Ray Del Mar or whatever it was. Yeah, I think it was a beginner that won it. Yeah, I mean, he literally oh, went out there yeah. and won that big tournament. You know, but that's you know. fishing, man. But the beauty of it is, again, the anglers are accepting that and not worrying about oh, you're a beginner, you might win. No, we're gonna yeah, take man. you out there and yeah. teach you. And you have seen throughout the years, man. Unfortunately, the the people that have passed away, you know, kayaking, and it's yeah. because they're not they're not being careful. And and a, you're in a kayak, man. It's 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 you and the boat, you know, you and the boat, and you got to take care of each other. The kayak's going to take care of you if you take care of the kayak. Kind of goes to that question that Aaron's asking. Uh, do you need to be strong to, to kayak fish in the bay? Uh, it's know your boundaries. Um, one thing that I, I strongly uh, I do every single time and my wife gets annoyed by it is I'm always on my weather app. Um, I'm checking the moon. I'm checking the tides. I'm checking the wind. The wind for sure. The wind for oh, sure. We yeah. live in the valley, guys. Um, it can be zero to five till noon and then right when noon hits it's blowing 20. yeah it's happened to us when we we yes. go all the way from port to to west bay and all of a sudden that 20 kicks in and and, 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 and unfortunately and back. unfortunately it's not a it's not a helping wind you know that 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 that, that, that <laughs> wind that came in that was 20 out of here. came out of the north <laughs> and you headed north you know so you got you got to hold your bearings and if any point uh you feel that you cannot make it Anchor down, pull down, rest. 
uh, don't force yourself to try to to go till exhaustion. Not a that's, waterman. That's, that's not what a happens. Water. Is is keep yourself hydrated. That's the first thing. If you know we live in the valley, it's so hot. You know, make sure. You know, one thing that I do that's that's super simple is I get five or six, seven water bottles and I freeze them overnight or, or a couple of days before. I just throw all those frozen water bottles into a, a nice bag and I carry that with my on my kayak. You know, one thing, got- one tip I can give you if you're a beginner, don't take a lot of stuff. No, drink, take waters, take take one rod, two rods maybe. I mean, you can get. I've seen some kayakers that is like, God, then you're gonna go camping or. <laughs> He's got more you stuff know, than yeah, you know, and, 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 and those guys and those guys are. You know, probably experience experience kind of they have a lot yeah. of stuff because they fish different if you're a beginner take it easy bro you know take it easy yep. you know go out there just something simple life jacket for sure that's the one thing yeah. you never want to forget uh to answer in my uh my opinion do you need to be strong for it i not no not not strong but like rudy says just know your boundaries for sure check the check the the the, the win but as far as strength no you don't you don't need to be strong you just yeah. need to be out there and, and be confident in what you're doing. Like anything that you're going to go do that involves you know, outdoors or a boat, you need to make sure you're confident on what you're doing. You, if you're scared, reach us, reach out to somebody. Yeah. Reach out to somebody and say, hey, man, I don't want to go on my own. There's nothing yeah. wrong with it, man. I yeah. didn't go on my own the first times I went. Hell no. I, I didn't even go on my own on the boat for like <laughs> three, four months that I got my boat. Yeah, it sounds like like when you're first getting started in the kayaking, like your first few trips aren't about fishing. They're about just kind of learning, learning, yourself, learning, learning yeah, out yeah, there. And absolutely. like the fishing is like the second part of it. It's kind of like when you buy a boat, right? Like you're the first, you know, so many hours of just kind of yeah. learning the boat. Still trying to learn this. the boat. <laughs> <laughs> but but it's kind of just that, right? So kind of figure out what this is. So don't worry about catching fish. It's not about, you know, coming That's the back. bonus. Yeah, it's going to be the bonus. Just being out there doing kayaking and kind of do, having that experience is going to be – and just be mindful that you're not going fish or, you know, it's not about fish. Don't go try to put yourselves in places where you think that are fit or fish are at. Just kind of stay around the, the kind of the, your lodging areas. Yeah, yeah, figure exactly. yourself out first. Yeah, Aaron, a good size, I would say about a 12 foot, 10 to 12 foot kayak would be a perfect size. You can get up to some 16s, but the longer it is, the the faster you're going to cut through the water. Uh, but now you have to haul something bigger, you know, but a, a to me, a 10 or a 12 is a perfect kayak. So, and then uh, like, like kind of what TJ was saying earlier, so practice at ponds. We talked about McAllen. Uh, we talked about Edinburgh. Uh, any other areas, ponds here and nearby? Kind of. Uh, I know about? Edinburgh also has the Doolittle Park. Uh, Doolittle Park. I've oh. gone several times over to the park just to go. And you can fish the Doolittle yeah, Park too, right? And you can also fish at Tres Lagos. Tres Lagos it's is all fresh catch release. water. It's catch yeah. and release. Um, I do have some friends that have caught some pretty nice bass out there. So it's, it's been on the back of my mind just to go hang out <laughs> and yeah. get out of work. Yeah. So, so, so Aaron, so it sounds like, you know, you, if you're, you're going to get a kayak, get out there, get out one of these groups, find someone that'll go out there with you. Call Rudy. Call yes, Rudy. Call me. He's in Edinburgh. Yeah, he's not far from there. So, uh, actually Aaron, Aaron's actually a really cool kid. So he's actually, uh, he, he's one of our first customers that built his own rod. So a lot of those Sweet. pictures you see where okay. he's building rods. He's how, old is, uh, how, how old is uh, Aaron? I, I believe he's like 12, 13. That's awesome. John. Yeah, yeah, so he's awesome. uh, Aaron, if I'm wrong, just correct me. But definitely he's uh, he's picking up fishing. He uh, He's into fly fishing too. He does it all, right? So he's an uh, aspiring. So, yeah, yeah. We grew up on the canales, so he's on the right track. <laughs> yeah, so he's, he's, he's got another. Right? He's, he's already a light year ahead of so, us. <laughs> so, any, any of you got kayakers out there and want to take uh, – t- take, uh, um, Aaron out there, just feel, he's 13. 13. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So anyone out there, just uh, feel free to, to reach out to Aaron directly. And, or if you need to, you can go through me and, uh, and just kind of get him into it. So he's a great kid. He's definitely does a lot of good things and he, he's working part time. And anyways, he just uh, stop. <laughs> but, but anyways, uh, so, all right. So, so you go out, um, you, 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 we talked about where you can fish here in pond. So, so let's talk about, you know, so you, you practice, you get your skills, you get your, you know, enough confidence to go out on the water. What are places you can fish here in the valley, uh, in the bay that uh, specifically launching kayaks at? I would say, as a beginner, I would go out of the convention center. Absolutely, that'd be the best place. That's a, a, an area where it's a little bit more protected from the wind. You can hit the little fingers that are right there. It's protected. Um, it's not too deep. I've actually gotten off the kayak. I think, I think Victor says that because he because he landed a tarp in there. Right? <laughs> that's, that's true. I did that's, land a tarp that's, in there. That's, Vic, that's Victor's kayak spot. Yeah. I've landed I'm a sorry, bunch I of reds there and bomb. stuff, but I did land a tarp in there, and it was just you know it was awesome. Uh, but that's what I would say as a beginner. I started going there and then KOA. And um, but the thing about KOA is now they kind of made it a little bit harder. Yeah, well, where's KOA? Uh, it's on the other side of the of yeah. the bridge by the. Once you cross over on your right hand side. Okay. 
but I, I agree. I agree with him. Um, a lot of people have asked where, you know, where do I go the first time I've, I've never been out there on the water? What do you suggest? I, I, I honestly suggest a convention center. It's got some hard ground just in case you do fall off your kayak. You're not, you're not in left mud. trudging in mud trying to, excuse me, get back to your kayak. Um, another great some, thing about, I'm sorry. Another great thing about the convention center is that it's an area where people are there. Yes. Yeah. Something happens. You need help. Somebody's yeah, there, gonna help you. Out. There's a lot of there's a lot of uh wind sail guys that are are hanging around the area. There's a lot of other fishermen that are waiting, you know, behind there. Um, and I know there's a lot of people that have a lot of worries about alligators or crocs in that area. There are there, but they're not there to hurt you. You're fine <laughs> if you're in your kayak. Um, we have seen some yeah, yeah, from time to time. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, I mean. I, I mean, I fished the convention center on my boat, right? So yeah. there's there's fish there too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you're on the boat, you're fishing there. Yeah. Yeah. So, so let's talk about kind of uh, things uh, as a kayaker to stay safe, uh, specifically when it comes to to boats, right? So definitely, uh, uh, a lot. There's a lot of boats out there. There's more and more boats every day. Uh, a lot of fast boats. A lot of people going, and specifically early in the mornings. I mean, boats are practically, you know, right on each other. Uh, and it's, it may be difficult to see a kayaker. Uh, so what are things as a kayaker you can do to uh, early in the morning or even throughout the day to stay safe and, and kind of uh, prevent any incidents specifically to boats? Um, one thing that's mandatory pre-light is a 360 visible light. Um, they, they have a bunch of websites where they sell um, little lamps that will go back on your kayak, kind of stick up in the air, and it's a 360 light. It is mandatory if you're out on, on, on the water pre-light. You don't need navigation lights or anything like that, but you do need a 360 light that, you know, is visible. Okay. Um, another like, thing, uh, yeah, another thing I, I recommend is a reflective flag. They um, A lot of these lights have a reflective flag on them, but you can find them at Lowe's or or any other hardware store. Okay. Um, I also wear a uh, a buff that that is reflective, only okay. because the more that they can see you, um, a lot of times these boats will run out there with a big old spotlight right. or whatever, you know, that cast back at them and they're able to see it. Okay. What about a, like a handheld light or, or do you require to carry any kind yeah, of? Yeah, I, I used to carry a little um, headlamp. Headlamp. headlamp? That's okay. what I would. And now if I would see a boat come in, I make sure that I turn it on, make sure that they know that I'm that I'm there. But the, the 360 light is probably be the best thing that you can, that you can get. But you're required. Uh, yeah, that's required. Yeah, right. that's required. Okay, so. um, Victor's mm -hmm. idea um, is, is a great idea. I know that I've, I've fished a lot of times up in Corpus and there's been boats going through and in and out. Um, a lot of these headlamps will have a strobe feature. Um, and I, you can ask David, he's been blinded by those several times in tournaments. Um, but we'll just turn the strobe on, face it towards the boat so that they're able to see you. Okay. But that's where that whistle comes in handy, just in case somebody does get too close you eat. You have your whistle, you use it. Right. Yeah. As so a just a quick reminder, whether you're a boat or whether you're on a kayak, so we all we, we all gotta share the water, right? We all gotta be mindful. It's not it's I don't have more right on it because I'm on a boat versus someone else or, or vice versa. I'm on a kayak. I should I can do this or that, right? We got Correct. better respect each other. There are yeah. rules out there. Uh specifically, you know, if you're getting your boating certificate. Uh, you'll say any boat without or any vehicle or any transport without any power always has the right away. Right. So so if you're on a boat and the kayaks in front of you, you know, it, it's your job as a boat operator to give the right away to the kayak. Yeah. With that in mind, I'm going to be very honest. You're in a kayak. Yeah. No, you're not going to be the boat. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. know, well, so that's physics. Right? Don't, yeah. don't 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 be that person that says, yeah. well, I have the right away. Yeah. Man, no. play it safe. Yeah. Don't worry about them. Worry like, about yourself. Yeah, exactly. You know, because yeah. if if. When so, it so what, comes to so, shove, you're gonna lose. So what does that mean? So what? So what is? What how, that means is instead of saying like, I, oh, I was here first or whatever. Like you know what? If, if it's a boat, bro, whatever, whatever the case may be. If that guy don't know what he's doing on the boat, you be careful for yourself in your kayak. If you see somebody coming fast, get out of the way. Even if the bite is good, there, you know, get in your kayak and get out of the way. Don't yeah. don't wait for them Depend to. Depend on the etiquette. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's just kind of like. Again, yeah, you uh, have to watch show out the yourself, etiquette right? first because a lot of times some of these boaters out there are recreational boaters. Um, they may have rented the boat from yep. the marina, um, may not have a boating license. They may just be out there. For Especially if you're out kayaking and you don't have the proper stuff. If you don't have your flag, you know, yeah. you have a, a green kayak that kind of blending in with the water and you're wearing a, a, a green, green shirt. shirt and, <laughs> and it's kind of like, hey, bro, like, come on. That's yeah. why, you know, you want to get those those bright colored shirts, you know, the, those yellows, those, those neon greens. Those are going to help you out there. They're yeah. going to help you to be a little bit more visible. All right. So do anything you can to increase your visibility, headlight, uh, the shirt, your buff, whatever you can wear that has any kind of reflective gear, especially if you're going to be fishing early morning, pre-sun or late in the afternoon or in the evening, early evening when, when boats can't see you. So, okay. 
Um, TJ has a question about how do, how do you transport your, uh, your, your kayaks when you're, you're hauling around? Uh, I know a lot of people that transport kayaks just in the tailgate of the truck. Uh, I don't, re I don't really recommend it. Um, I personally, uh, use a bed extender. Yeah. Um, I use a bed extender to support the rest of the way to the kayak. A lot of times, uh, the, the road might be bumpy and might pull down on the kayak and you have it strapped down pretty tight. Uh, it'll cause stress cracks in your kayak. Okay. It's the last thing you want to have happen on the way to the water when you don't know about it. You yeah. get in the water and you start leaking. Yeah. So, um, so what kind of uh, kind of along the same? Oh, we'll let you finish kind of this thing. So a bed extender to uh, transport. Yeah, uh, Harbor Freight has some very inexpensive ones. You can get online. You can find kayak specific ones. Uh, but even the, the the bed extenders they sell for lumber. Okay. You, know, yeah. you, you don't really need those something work. extravagant. It's just. Something to give weight support on the. You don't need the T bone or whatever yeah. it's called. You, know, you, <laughs> you don't need to spend four hundred dollars. <laughs> Harbor Freight with a coupon has them at fifty bucks. Bro. Yeah. How, work. how heavy are these kayaks? I mean, something someone one person can handle. Uh, it just depends on the kayak here. Yeah, you, like a Hobie, I think is what by one thirty. It's one thirty dry. So that dry. means there's no equipment on yeah. it. Just the Hobie the and, and the seat. That's yeah. which one though? That is uh, the Outback. Uh, Victor yeah, and I ran Outbacks yeah, for quite a while. So, because yeah, his PA, it's not <laughs> yeah, sorry, uh, <laughs> I did, I did run, I, I did run a Hobie PA, and, and Fabian did run in that quite. It, it is heavy. That's a big mama John, man. That's but a, that one, a hell of a but, that, but that one, I'm not gonna lie. I did turn around a couple of times, saw that, uh, him doing the two step, and, 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 <laughs> and he was on there, and, like, some, <laughs> and some cumbias on the top. You know, he was. It was, it was, it was a right, lot of stability. Yeah, absolutely, you, yeah. you, you can. Do everything like a, that. a uh, beginner's kayak, like a pelican, I think it weighs like about sixty pounds. So they're not, they're not very, very heavy. There's yeah. something that you can do it on your own, unless you have a pro angler, then yeah. it's Hobie, a little bit tough. Hobie it. came out with a, a very inexpensive uh, version of their kayak. It's still a pedal kayak, but it is a two mold, and it is the Hobie Compass. Uh, they call it the suit ki uh, suitcase kayak because you can kind of pick it up like a suitcase oh, nice. and, yeah. and run it around. It's maybe about ninety pounds or, okay. or so. It's only um, a grand. Yeah. Okay. And, and I, think it, I, I think it's about twelve hundred, and it comes. Yeah. It comes with the Mirage Drive. What size okay. is that? A twelve? And it's a twelve yeah, foot kayak. That's a, that's a the great thing kayak, is, man. your your Mirage Drive on a, on a Hobie kayak costs seven fifty or eight hundred dollars, brand new. Yeah. You know, you're paying twelve hundred dollars for the kayak. And, yeah. And, so it'd be and, like and kind of buying a Pelican, like an upgrade or like yeah, absolutely. Price wise, right? Yeah, so I actually definitely. thought about. <laughs> you can you can invest into a kayak trailer. The only thing is now you have another expense because you're gonna have to register that trailer. Yes, you're gonna absolutely. have to get placas and make sure your lights are working. Yes, I have one. I, I have I, one too. Yeah, and, uh, I, and you know it's awesome. It. And it's oh, I got a kayak trailer. And then it's like <laughs> tell that shit, man. And, and then you're driving <laughs> down the expressway at sixty. <laughs> <and you laughs> kayak Where's the trailer? I don't know. That was such a good idea. So if you if you're gonna have a fleet of kayaks, that's different. The more weight you put in the trailer, the better it's gonna be. But I had, I ran, dude, I literally ran a whole, a boat trailer that was rigged up with a, with a top and I had a, a two, two boxes on the side and I ran two kayaks out there when I would go with my buddies and it was still like, it was a lot of trailer. It was just a lot of hassle. Just throw them in the damn bed of the truck, you know, get an extender, tie them up, and you're good to go. So me personally, I would, I sold it for a reason. So I don't recommend it. Yeah. Uh, and same with me. Well, it's just easier, you know, unless you're going to be carrying five kayaks, like Victor said, you don't really need and a trailer. A trailer. Even if you're carrying just two, um, I've carried three hobies in my truck. I think uh, yeah. just stacking the, them right. The kayakers who look Gunner. Gunner has a real nice setup on his where it's uh, like he actually has like two platforms. So you go put okay. one on the bed and then another one on the, on the top of it, and it works out really well. Yeah, yeah Gunner's on another level. Yeah. And, <laughs> well, also, I think it depends on how far you're. Like we're an hour away. That's an yeah. hour drive. Yeah. Like yeah. that's that's a long drive. So if you're somewhere closer, you live in the Bronzeville area, I live true. You know, yeah, if you live in the yeah. Vista, yeah, it might be convenient yeah. just to you know, slap you on a trailer or, or even, you know, yeah. those pool trailers, you can put on a bike and get, get to there. <laughs> like Vista. But it, it's, it's, it's just safer. You know, yep. you're not, you're not, not having to worry about traffic and things like that. And, and if you buy one of those, like the Malone ones, I mean, they get expensive. Yes. Uh, they get expensive, those kayaks. Oh, yeah. hell yeah. And transporting it on the bed of your truck. And, and I, I know uh, you said at the beginning of the Pelican, you're you know, worried about the actual, you know, Attention. bringing it down. Now, is that an issue that you have to think about? Yes. Well, um, even with the with the trailer, you still got to strap it down. I'm yeah. saying like, you know, if, if I do get a Hobie, do I have to worry about bending that if I go too tight on the, on the Yes strap? and no. Uh, because Rudy said, you know, you can get stress cracks. So if you get too, too tight. You know, you just gotta tighten it up, and then you move it. If it's if if you can move it with your hands, you're good to go. Okay. So right? if for you keep all on you guys, going and going and going, plus you're gonna break something. For all you guys that have a Hobie, um, Hobie does have warranties on their kayak. They're great, but one of their one of their key features is that they don't they don't uh, recommend using ratchet straps. 
Um, so I learned through this, a ratchet strap will tighten it down and it'll cinch it down, yep. which will essentially within time kind of right, compress, compress it, and, yeah. and, and, and shift. Yep. So if you run over a bump and things like that, you could get stress cracks. Uh, what they do recommend are the, just the pull straps where you pull it or? as tight as it gets. It, it's, it's a, it's like a ratchet strap, but without the ratchet, it's okay. just kind of a pinch strap. As tight as you pull it is. That come as, as, a bunch. Of, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, I, I, I do recommend those a lot more than I would a ratchet strap. Yeah, yeah definitely. You're, yeah, you, know, you definitely have some mechanical. Yeah, because you can crank. I mean, as, as a ratchet strap, I mean, you don't know the pressure you're putting. You're just cranking it down yeah. to make sure it ain't going to move. You yeah. don't want your kayak on the side then, of the road. And then you give it one more, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, you're like, ah, I and then boom. <laughs> yeah. And then you hear the plastic pop, you know. Like, you're just like, wait. Yeah. So, so, um, so we talked about uh, kind of transporting kayaks, and so the one thing that said you, we mentioned a lot was like put in the bed of your truck, put in your bed of your truck. But, but if you don't have a truck, I mean, I've seen people carry them on the, on their cars. Uh, <laughs> I carry them in my go. car, man. I've seen I've seen Victor roll yeah. up to Holly Beach yeah, in my car. With bro, the, one with time, the kayak on the top of the escort, yeah, rolling yeah, hard. Yeah, yeah, my my jeep was down, and I didn't, and I just threw it on top of the car. I put a, a blanket on it. Yes. They, they do sell some. Uh, I had bought some deals that. You put air on them. So okay. It's two little deals that go strapped to the car. And you put air on them and then you put the kayak on top of that. And those little things are from Yakima. They already had the strap on it. Okay. So those were pretty good. They're about a hundred bucks and uh, they were great. If, they you're, were great. So you're, if you're driving into the car, you would recommend something like that. Yeah. But you can see the dent, the, the hood, the <laughs> top of the car. <laughs> but uh, but when, you, when you got that seven day addiction, <laughs> you got to do what you got to do, man. And you don't have to go buy a truck, right? Yeah. <laughs> so you get I need to buy a truck anyways. <laughs> and a trailer. And a boat. And two kayaks. That's kind of how it goes. You start off with a car then you put a Kayak, you put the kayak on the, on yeah. the bed on the top of the car. You're like, now we need a truck to put the kayak. Well, the kayak's too small. And I need now we need a boat. Right. <laughs> that, might, uh, that was the <laughs> little rollers <laughs> and everything. Yeah, it was. It gets expensive, man. Yeah, yeah. Just anything gets expensive. But so. but like anything, anything gets expensive. But you go out there, you man. catch a fish on a kayak, bro, and you just like, damn. If you yeah. catch a, a good size red, it's oof. another world. What's up, you Daisy? Thanks for, trip, for tuning man. in, man. Yeah, Thanks for watching us from Houston, oh, bro. Yeah. You go for a ride. Uh, so, 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 you know, there's a lot of things that can happen to your kayak. We, uh, during transport, we talked about stress crack. We talked about different things. So what kind of inspection or pre-launch visual inspection, what are you looking for in your kayak to make sure that it's not, um, damaged or that it's fit for putting on the water, or you just kind of go out there and put it out there and it starts taking it in water and you, you take it out. What I would do is every time I went kayak, you know, I would open the hatches and see if it had water inside. So like if it rained and it had water inside, that means that you're getting water coming in from somewhere. Okay. Right. So the more water you have, the more weight, the more you're going to have to you know, force yourself. So uh, I would always make sure that I checked. And if it had some water, drain it. And then when I got in the water, I always did this. I always made sure I had no water. Then when I got in the water, give it about five minutes and I open the hatches again and see if there's water in there. I go outside. Home. Sun yeah. is wrong. Yep. Sun yep. is wrong. And then after five, 10 minutes, if you saw no water coming in, you know, yeah, hey, I'm good to go. With you in it? Yes, with, with me in it. it. Yeah, yes. on the water, yeah. yeah. That's okay. what I would do. So just to so show yeah, just a quick way, you know, just a quick visual inspection, just put it in the water and just do a leak test on it before you actually start yeah, getting absolutely. trying to get too far ahead of ahead of yourself. So uh and maybe, then you as you're going out, you go out one time and you do good and you go back out and you see there's water, you know, going in. You go back in there again, and there's more water going in the kayak. Kayaks are going to take some water in. That's what I was about yeah. to ask. They're going to so take some water in. Is it common to have a little bit? Like, what was yes. a lot? I, yes. The most that I had in my kayak one time was about a gallon, which wasn't too bad. Okay. One time I did, when I had the Pelican, I did have, I, I overstrapped, and I actually lost my kayak in the channel. <laughs> like, I was, I ended up having to, like, I was belly up on the kayak, and then I, we actually, I had my wow. Jeep. I had my Jeep, and I, um, I had the, I had a stake up hole. And it was floating, so I got the jeep. I brought the winch, and I went to my kayak. Oh, out. Right. So that was the last time I was able to use it, but it, it did scare me. But at that I time, bet. yeah, I overstrapped the kayak. Oh man, that's crazy! I ended so. up giving the kayak away to some dude on Facebook. I, I was like, it. free? Uh, no, I was like, I was like, free? No hala. Don't no worry. Hala. But you can use it for whatever you want. He came and picked it up. I've like, never been in the water. <laughs> um, so, so if something like that were to happen, uh, what are the chances of you fixing? I mean, what's the process of trying to get your kayak and fixed? Or is I, I didn't try to fix mine, but I think with the whole beach is a little bit different. Yeah, you can you can do some plastic welding here and there. Um, it is It can get tedious and it can get uh, cumbersome to try to get all the, the spots welded right. Um, I know that uh, a good buddy of mine, Tracy Dedman, 
uh, lives in Harlem, and he does a lot of work with Fin Factory and Corpus. Great job on that tournament uh, recently, Tracy. Yeah, Tracy. Um, he's he's helped me out. Um, he's he's done some plastic welding. Um, he's very experienced in, in in that area. I'm not putting you on blast. I'm not having everybody go to Tracy. <laughs> um, but he's very knowledgeable. It's no, it's Fabian. Done. It's not Gunner. It's Fabian. <laughs> Fabian and Gunner. <laughs> uh, no relation. It is. We are at Landis, but there's no relation there. Not the to, not to, to bet there. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, one thing that I, I used to carry on my kayak and I still do is wet weld. Okay. Uh, JB Weld makes a, a tube. It's called wet weld. Uh, it's just a little Play-Doh that on the whimsical, if you need something patched up, it can patch something up even if there's water flowing in. Okay. Uh, it oh, hardens. Wow. It hardens up, and it provides a temporary seal just to, to help get you out of a bond. Yeah, yeah. To, get, to get you out of trouble, to get yeah. you out of danger. Is it worth fixing? Safety wise, is it worth fixing? Depends on how the big, you and, know, how, and, what, and the location of the crack. Yeah. Like mine was in between the seam. The seam came out. I had nothing. I can put mocos on there, chicle, <laughs> gorilla glue, whatever. <laughs> it ain't gonna work. Duct tape, duct tape, duct tape. <laughs> it ain't gonna work, man. I wasn't even gonna you risk. Wasn't it. gonna try the flex. Yeah. Yeah. And then we have a buddy like uh, my, Michael. Um, he, um, can pronounce his last name is too gringo for me, but Mike uh, he does a stickout pose. Oh, Huffy, Huffy, there, Huffy stick, right? Yeah. So he had a crack on his, and he he uh, did a plastic weld, and it worked great for him. It's done, it's done good for him, and that was on a pro angler. So yeah, you're not gonna throw away a oh, okay, two thousand dollar boat because you have a little crack. Gotcha. And, and it perfect. also depends on where they crack. One one thing that I can uh, recommend, and and I've never done it, but I do work at Lowe's, and we do have that flex seal tape. And I've used it myself at the house just to mess around with it, and that thing works, man. You can even <laughs> with water cleaner. Yeah, it's yeah, it works. It's not sponsored by them. But no, uh, uh, not by by them. if you want to sponsor our yeah. podcast, just uh, comment below, yeah. and uh, and also Cropper. If when you you're talking wanna, too much, you, know, you guys, Cropper guys, want to sponsor us? Uh, we, we <laughs> keep on to keep this going. So. <laughs> But but so, so Rudy, you were mentioning that. So it really it also depends on the location of the crack or or the, the damage. So what are some areas that you would say, yeah, I could still do this, or I could, or yeah, I bottom of the hole. It. The bottom of the hole is the most, uh, I guess, risky part. You know, that's the part that's in the water the most of the time. Yep. Um, if you have a crack that's on top of the kayak somewhere, uh, those are your best chances to JB weld it or or get some 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 guy that knows how to plastic weld and, and help you patch it up. Okay. Um, the ones that are at the bottom of the, of the kayak can be done. I've seen it done plenty of times, but yeah, that's kind of yeah. depends on your, your ability and your confidence in your weld. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's like, I, I mean, I don't think it's worth risking it. Right. Yeah, Especially yeah. if you don't have that level of confidence. Right. So it's just, uh, and know. I know that there, you know, we're not, we're not that fast paced yet, but I know that there's some companies, you know, Corpus San Antonio, uh, they do offer, plastic welding to kayaks. So if, if at any point, you know, you yeah. get online, research it and, and find the right direction to get to. So, so before you even get to that point, is there any kind of, you know, coating you can put on the bottom of your uh, kayaks to kind of prevent them from getting this, these burns? I, I used to, um, I used to actually uh, like a, like the coating for the vehicles, yeah, like a line X, but yeah. the oysters are tough, bro. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Scratch so the shit I, out, um, man. I think I think there's a new product out there called Gator Guard yeah. or something of but that. But that's more for like the the, the hull, the, the keel, yeah, the of, keel. Of, of, of your boat. Because what happens? In. Well, what happens is when you drop your kayak off off your your truck, the first thing that hits is the back of the boat. Okay. And that back of the boat, ten, nine times out of ten, nine out of ten times is on asphalt, and it'll slide a little bit. Yeah. And kind of Over time, it. it's going to kind of take off a piece of that hull, and you don't want to you don't want to create a small pinhole. Yeah. Because that's where those problems. Okay. If you do get a kayak that has a, a seat uh, that you can remove, that's when you got to check it out because a lot of the times as you're getting yeah. standing up and sitting down on that's that, where it gets um, in. Yeah, you do get some a little bit of stress fractures on there. Yeah, yeah. If yours is one of those that's already pre molded that you sit on it, then you're not you're worried good, about yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. So, so we talked kind of walk someone through the process of kind of getting started, what to look for. Uh, the other thing I want to talk about is I know both of you guys have purchased uh, used kayaks in the past, and so. So what are things you're looking for in a used kayak, uh, you know, kind of along the way? So it's one thing to go buy a brand new one, right? Whatever out of the box. But, you know, you have a kayak that you're buying from someone and for whatever reason, maybe someone like me bought a kayak and oh, I didn't buy it. But, but you, know, you know, someone bought it. They tried it out a few times. This isn't for me. And then, like, I just, I just want to get rid of it or they fished it plenty of times. So what are a few things you're looking for on that? 
Most like most kayakers are actually gonna be pretty honest with you yeah. and let you know if, if it's if it's just like most boaters are huh? like the one <laughs> most boat owners. Oh, <laughs> I'm about that. Kayak guys are, are are out there to take care of each other. Um, we're probably way more likely to tell you, hey, this thing leans to the right. You know, not even that it takes on water. You'll just tell them you, you want to buy it. That's fine. It does lean to the right. You know, you just want to care for their safety more than anything else. Because that's that's the name that's the name of the game. You want them to be healthy on the water and still catch fish, but you don't want them to have any issues. What I looked for when I was buying some kayaks that were used, uh, I would look at the bottom of the yeah. kayak. That's where you're gonna have most of your damages from oysters from hitting something. Uh, most kayaks, well, the hobies are what about a quarter of an inch? Yeah, actual, they're pretty thick. Right? Okay, right. So you would gauge that. Say, well, how big is this? Is this there's a slit on it, or there's some missing pieces of kayak in there? How big is it? You know, if it's if you notice it's almost it's a quarter of an inch gouge. deep, then more likely you're already at the end of its life. Yeah. So those are the kind of things that you got to keep in mind. Every kayak you buy used is going to have oyster rash. Yeah. There, every kayak that is used, unless the guy never used it, yeah. then you might not have it. Kind of so, like your Revo. Kind of like the Revo. I bought a Revo that <laughs> you like the I think the guy yeah. used it twice, and then yeah. I bought it from them. And it had no, like nothing at all. Yeah, and and that oyster rash is is quite common. Um, like Victor said, you'll see some gouges, some missing. Uh, pieces of plastic but you stick your finger in that plastic you'll know how deep it really it really runs through your kayak you know how they check with the penny or the, the like tires, the tires yeah, yeah. Kind of like that. <laughs> so just gauge it that right so uh dj's asking about the uh, uh the hobie warranty i know you guys met, talked about it a little bit so what is the hobie warranty? um i'm not gonna i i wouldn't be able to get into specifics of their warranty i'm not i'm not 100 percent sure on how they i think it's a two-year warranty if i'm not mistaken on on their actual hole so okay. if it's a, it's a defect on their hole or something of that nature then then they'll you'll get in contact with the dealer that you purchased it at and and there's a serial number on your hobie all hobies have it it's a little uh it's like a heat a heat print okay so they yeah. heat up some numbers and they stamp, stamp it, it yeah. yeah and actually and, all kayaks have a, a, serial, a serial number, number yeah. yeah so you'll give the serial number to the, the guys at hobie and they'll tell you if your warranty is up or if it's still valid and then you can you can send them the information and they'll get back to you. Like my outback, my uh, my seat went bad, and uh, it was when uh, Joe's Joe Stackel Correct. was still around, and I took my seat to him. He called Hobie, gave him the serial number. It just happened to be it was in the warranty. They sent me a brand new seat. That seems like four hundred bucks, dude. Yeah, send me a brand new seat. So, I mean, so, so Hobie's yeah. a good. They got a good warranty. They so, got a good warranty. And they so, back their products. Really and, well. and we say we the Hobie that entry level Hobie starts at about twelve hundred. Yes, correct. That's okay. the Hobie Compass. The Hobie Compass. Okay, so and my and my opinion is the Outback. In my opinion, the Outback is to me the best boat out there. My opinion. And so, and and I'm on that same. I'm, <laughs> I, I think I think we came in on the same boat because I I I, I ran the. PA. All right, well, let's talk about that. So so you the both of you started off with Pelican uh rudy after how many years were you in this hobie uh it, it took me four years to finally snap and say you know four years you know for this it. paddle paddle <laughs> cast cast paddle paddle cast cast and, and this was the one you got into the hobie outback for uh, i years. first got into a pro angler okay um and and just so just the pro angler what where does that sit on the hobies tiers uh that's the, the they're that's, top the cat, that's the cadillac, oh, that's the cadillac. Hobie. okay yeah that's, uh, other than their ai which is the adventure island comes with a sail and 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 outriggers you're 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 looking at maybe about thirty five hundred to four grand for the new PA. Okay. Uh, so then the Outback is what does that retail at? Um, What's the new one going about twenty six twenty six fifty or twenty seven hundred give yeah. or take. Okay. Yeah, but that thing is sweet, man. Yeah, so, so, I think it's so, rigged out. So so let's talk about you know. So obviously you start off with the Pelican, you're you're paddling, and then you go decide you want to go with a uh, a paddle system, and you decide to go with the Hobie. Uh, and you know, 1200, 2800, let's say you buy the, the Outback, uh, you know, what's that transition like? So from paddling to, pe to paddle from night and day, man, night and day, <laughs> night and day. So, so what are some of the benefits of it? You can fish while you're going to your spot. Basically yeah. you can you use your feet and you're, you're going with your hands. Another great thing about the Outback that I liked that one of the features that I liked the most was that you can be going with your feet and then you get tired and you can just paddle it like a regular kayak. And there's some where you can't. Yeah. There's some where you know if you use like a pro angler, that thing is not. It's not that easy. Not that easy. Try fishing in the, in the marsh with it. Yeah, so <laughs> and, 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 and he says that for a reason because there are going to be times hey, your legs kind of just yeah, you cramp out. They, the rosas. They, they peter out and <laughs> and you just 
you just lay your paddle, your, your pedals flat. You pick up your pedal, your paddle and you start paddling just as if you were any and, other kayak. And so, um, so just quick on the Mirage, can you explain how that works? Uh, it's two fins that, that flip, uh, side to side. Okay. So, uh, you're pedaling front to back as you're going forward and back and, and your pedals underneath the water going back and forth. And, and steering, how do you steer? Uh, there's a control knob on, 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 on now on the new, the both. new models, they have, you know, steering knobs on both sides, which is super convenient. If you're right-handed, left-handed, it doesn't matter. Um, and how deep can you paddle before you, before these fins start hitting? Um, it depends on what pedals you have. Cause they have a turbo system and then they have a regular system. The regular system, you can get to probably about eight to 12 inches. Okay. Well, wow. and the newer, uh, ST model, which is maybe about 12 to 14 inches. Okay. That and the new, Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, people that are buying that, I mean, those, I mean, these Hobie kayaks, they, they, you, they use them not only in shallow water, you see people. Well, now, and, well like, now, now they have something called the kickback system. So you get into some shallow water and it's too shallow. The fins will actually kick back All right, well, they uh, just to like allow spring, you spring. Yeah. yeah. They spring back, allow you to kind of coast in the, in, in the shallow waters. Good deal. Yeah. You can go on shallow with the regular one, but you basically, instead of going all the way, you got to go, you got to go flutter. Flutter. Yeah. Baby, baby, baby. Yeah. and they're just and going, no, they're man, going man. on top of the kayak. If you're, if you're flutter kicking, you, you, you literally get to four inches yeah. and, and not have any issues. You can still flutter kick and, and four inches. Make, make sure you don't forget to pull up your, 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 uh, your rudder. Your rudder. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, super, yeah, super, super important. You don't have it locked. That's <laughs> how you get about it. Yeah. <laughs> or you're anchoring the water. Yeah. <laughs> So, so the other thing is, um, so kind of along this, right? So you go in out kayak in the morning, it's dark. Um, you may or may not know where you're going based on that. Do you guys carry a GPS, any kind of, uh, I compass? do, um, I do tournament fishing. So I, I, I absolutely use mine. I utilize it quite often for the beginner fishermen. I don't see it as, as such a necessity. I use uh, my phone. I, would uh, use my phone. I have crappy service. So I, that wasn't an alternative for me. Um, so I, 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 during Christmas time is, is a great time to look at different units. Okay. Only because those Christmas sales are so, so, so deep that you can get one for, for pennies on the dollar. Which, which one do you have? Right now I run the Lawrence nine. Okay. And how big of a unit is that? Is it's a nine inch screen. It's a nine inch. Screen. Oh, yeah, so you got the actual. Yeah. It's, feature, it's, nice it's the same one. Five inch. <laughs> it's, the same one. It's, it's the same one that, that the common boat guy would use. Uh, you know they sell and what, what kind of battery are you using to power I'm, that? I'm running it off of a nine volt uh deer feeder battery okay just a uh, small battery capsulize it yeah. it's rechargeable and they do make all these kind of crazy liquid cells just like they do for the boats they make right. them for, for kayaks and small little comportable parts you can watch netflix <laughs> yeah definitely definitely yeah he knows you just hook it up and just, you start pulling you can watch the netflix on your lawrence it, well, not on your lawrence but if you want to hook it up to the battery you're good oh, you yeah. figure out a way to go <laughs> tv netflix out there <laughs> you can also buy the the maps you know the, the ones that tell you all the oh, man. fishing spots they do have uh, I, I, tkf i, think I, that's I would I, those are those are super 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 yeah. cool um they map out just as you would go to the store and buy the map that gives you the bay layout you know this same mapping chart, we put it in your Lawrence. It's, oh, wow. it's a microchip, brings up the whole bay. Wow. And it tells you uh, good trout spots, good redfish spots, good flounder spots. Hey, there's a drop off here, grass flat here, things like that. Oh, but it also right. gives you kayaking. Like, uh, so so there's there's also, if you look at the one that's on paper, there's kayak charts. There's, yeah, there's yeah. a kayak chart. Really? So TKF, I think TKF. Yeah. And yeah, those are. What's the difference between just a regular one and uh, well, well, TKF is the organization that says we're, we're going to put it together as far as we're going to okay. go fish these areas and see what's good for a kayak. So, so what is TKF? Uh, Texas Kayak Fisherman. Texas Kayak Fisherman. And, and, so, and it's, it's big, just an organization that, that, that runs Texas. They kind of run coast to coast. They they put together, like you said, maps. And it's the same boating map that you would buy. And if you tip, you know, you kind of pay attention, there's going to be a different uh, on your map. On the bottom, there's a little uh, quest key and it'll tell you a hashtag of yellow line and right you look on your map and you'll see little yellow lines along the shorelines <laughs> yeah and and it gives you layouts of where good kayaking spots are where you don't get into trouble and you kind of and can, usually those areas have an area where you like where you can like yeah, they're, they're, kayak. Or, or close yeah. by yeah, yeah absolutely so they're, they're pretty it comes in pretty they're handy pretty, and they're pretty accurate when, yeah. when it comes to the information they the rest is up to you yeah <laughs> the rest is how <laughs> you remember it's it's to you. like you're just getting started about getting out there you yeah know, building some confidence in that maybe so uh, so, so right now you would recommend the Hobie Outback. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's like at any level. Like, like, look, if you you could either do two things, right? You can start out with the with a starter kayak. You could do what we did. We yeah. could, we spent about eight thousand dollars before you get to <laughs> before the we actually right? spent the twenty three hundred dollars on our, on our <laughs> kayak. Or you can say, you know what? I'm gonna go all in. I'm gonna buy the 
I'm gonna buy the Hobie. And in our case, we're talking about Hobie. We're not we're not sponsored by Hobie. Not Hobie if we're, you talk- want to <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about Hobie because we both have used them. Yeah, you know, we both used them. We know the good quality that they put together. But there's a lot of kayaks out there. Um, Pelican actually has one. They just came out with a PDL. Called. Um, it's, West PDL. Uh, it's a pedal system. Pedal system. Okay. Yeah. Um, they use I, the old the Pelican Catch. Hobie one. It's called the Pelican Catch 120. Oh, uh, yeah, Catch uh, 120. Yeah, and and it is. Um, uh, so I think so 12 footer. It's a 12 footer. I think uh-huh. in 2017 or 2018, Hobie's patent came um it's came modern. to an end. And Hobie and I'm sorry, Pelican, Pelican picked up on it, um, and they replicated the pedal system into one of their kayaks. Um, great kayak, runs about sixteen hundred dollars, um, but it is also a two mold. So okay, you know, so there's that seam on it. That yeah, you there are some. Right, so. There are some other key features to the kayaks that 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 do determine a difference. And, yeah, I think one of the biggest things also is that again, I think you do want to try a kayak first yeah. <laughs> before even. I mean, even though you said you know you want to go all in, I think you want to go all in when you know you're going to be kayaking. Yeah, you know, you don't want to go all in when it's the it's first tough, time, right? Go and, and it's tough to kind of. I mean, I, I don't know if Toby or any other dealers here have any kind of a format where you can get out and test a test it before you. Drive. No, it's, Fin Factory uh, in Factory. Corpus, they have a demo day. Um, What's up, Roy, and Yeah, they they have a demo day over there in Corpus, they have a demo and, day in Corpus. and and they don't. They and I think Roy's also oh, so Roy's Roy's Bait and Tackle. Roy's, Roy's Bait and Tackle. Are Corpus. they the nearest Toby dealer? Yeah, they're in Corpus. Uh, there used to be one here, but they yeah, uh, it was Juby Captain. Unfortunately, they. they yeah, it was. Uh, there was at the island. They used to have a Hobie dealer, but they no. And they also had demo days. Yeah, they did. Yeah. They they had it at the island, but they no longer have it down here. As as far as a dealer. Um, so matter of fact, that's how I got into the Hobie because I actually went to a demo day for UB Captain uh-huh. and I actually borrowed. They let me borrow a Quest. Okay. And uh, a Quest was uh, like a, the, one of the beginner line. Yeah. 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 And I used that kayak and I realized that I was like man, missing out <laughs> way too <laughs> much. Different man. I think yeah. it is worth driving the two hours to Corpus. And, yeah. Uh, and doing. I mean, Corpus offers up a variety. Of oh yeah. Sand factory. Um, you, go to, you go to Roy's with Rocky. Wade. Yeah, if you go to Roy's with Rocky and you go into his kayak department, you just uh, left it off. I mean, <laughs> it's not just Hobie. Yeah, and they, have, that's, that's they have everything. They have, yeah, they, they, yeah. they have an assortment of kayaks. It's not just one brand. They have, Jackson has a damn kayak that's like, what, 30 pounds? Yeah. Oh, dang. Crazy. Yeah. Is well, there HD? Oh, oh, I don't oh, know. Hobie has an inflatable kayak, but that's a whole other yeah. level of, of, of stuff. Oh, there, yeah, we, we talk about yeah. Oyster, Oyster Red. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> not with that brand, they would have it here. It was Oyster Red. <laughs> So yeah, now Rockies is uh, Roy's in, in, in Corpus. They have a really good show out of, of kayaks. So does Mike Morales there at Fin Factory. So so we said there's the Compass, there's the um, Outback, the Pro AM. Are there any other Hobies along the way? We said that the top tier one, which is called the, the Adventure Island. Island. Yeah. I, uh, my buddy Tracy has that. Um, a lot of the offshore guys, uh, BTV guys, that's that's their go-to kayak. It's got a sail. Uh, it allows them to get out there quicker. It's got trampolines and it's got the outriggers. So I mean, if you're offshore and, and you're hooked up, Javi de Leon has one too. Javi right? does too. Yeah. Uh, there's there's about six or seven guys down here in the valley that that, that yeah, actively go and, and fish offshore. Yep. Um, I've seen them out there. Oh man, it's awesome. You know, <laughs> Dude, those things are fast, man. Yeah. When, they, they, when you come picking up the wind on the set, oh yeah, I've seen them just flying and and, 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 and they're trailing on water. And and those outriggers help you know a tremendous amount. You know, as they're moving. Yeah, and, and you control right. Oh, <laughs> you know, and that's their main gig is is, is that if they're offshore, they're not. They're not jigging. They're not at. A, they're, they're not. Trolling. At, yeah, they're trolling. They got. They got a ribbon fish on the back, and they're looking for a mass. A massive fifty inch. You know, fifty foot. Yeah. 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 <laughs> if you go offshore, you don't gotta be strong. You just gotta have some big ones. Yeah. <laughs> I've never gone offshore, man. I never went offshore yeah. in the kayak. I would stay there by just close as I can see them, and they'll be like, "Hey, traiga mi uno." <laughs> but I never went offshore. At the jetties, the jetties is always what kind of makes or breaks yeah, people, yeah. man. And <laughs> and and if if that's something that interests you, I. Uh, if you're if you're if you're wanting to try BTB and you're wanting to go offshore, um, South Padre Island offers a great venue because you don't have to launch from the beach. You don't have to go through the breakers. You don't have to go through the waves. You can actually go through Dolphin Cove and and ride ride around uh, along the jetty line. Uh, just be mindful of the boats that are running through the channel. Yeah. As I you're mean, there's going. a lot there's a lot of traffic in there. Absol- yeah. Absolutely, don't damage the boats. But guys. I, I do believe it, <laughs> I do believe it's it, you know if it's your first time ever trying it, going out with someone, I think it's a little easier than trying to get through the breakers. Um, so there's a question here is uh, and actually this was something I wanted to touch about. So are there any uh, so so TJ offers this mothership kind of service where he takes guys out on his kayak. I, I imagine you provide your own. Oh, kayak. that's true, dude. Manny Torres. Oh, yeah. 
Hell yeah. So, so it's got a bold rig for it, bro. Yeah. yeah. Well, so, so let's talk about, um, so, so what exactly does Manny offer? So Manny is actually a captain, a kayak captain. Okay. Uh, it's uh, Rod Benders is the, the crew that he well, carries. Where are they out of? He's out of, uh, he's out of Brownsville. Okay. Right, he's out of Brownsville. He's got a, a really nice, uh, I call it a duck boat. It's got a cool looking motor, like a mud motor on it. Uh, but it's, it's, like a, it's like a beaver tail. Yeah, okay. it's, 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 it's rigged for you to take your kayaks on. Uh, I believe, it's not wilderness anymore? No. No, I don't. Viking. I, Viking, you're right. Yeah. That's what the, the, the company, the company he, he's he with. Um, but that's a great guy to go with. Uh, Manny's very knowledgeable. So when you very, go with Manny, nice like, it's going to be like, he's going to be in a kayak and you're going to be in a kayak yeah, next to him? Yeah, Manny will, will put you in a kayak and he'll kayak with you. He'll, 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 when I went with Manny the first times, it wasn't just fish. It was kayak teaching state. you. Yeah, yeah teaching kayak. you about kayaking. Going through the whole process. Right, this is what we're going to do. We're going to drift here. We're going to come over here. We're going to go through here. And that's how actually, you know, he helped me a lot. He helped me a lot. Uh, and he studies the kayaking and trips. Do you guys know what kind of kayaks he's running? I think Vikings. I Vikings? think Vikings is okay. what he's. Okay. So, Aaron, if you're still watching, uh, I mean, that might be a good way for you to go out yeah. there, get out with someone experienced who has some, you know, experience, not only experienced kayaking, but has experience with different um, different types of kayaks yeah. and kind of point you in the right direction and, as, you know, also show you where the fish are at. And so, uh, yeah, TJ saying he's uh he, he's just a taxi, so yeah. <laughs> He'll uh, you out. Gunner Gunner in uh, Corpus does guiding uh, a yeah. kayak guy man. The same way it, kind of thing where he provides the he kayak. Has his own, yeah, he, okay. he provides the kayak. If you have your own kayak and you want to use your own kayak, by all means, uh hands what, down. What it, kind of it, what kind of kayaks is he's in hobbies? He's in hobbies. Right? Pelicans. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but if you go, depending on how, when you get there, no, you get a pelican. Bro. <laughs> I think there's old pelican. Right, pelican. Yeah. No, he's 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 an amazing person. Right, great knowledge on the water. Um, attention to detail. Um, attention what, to safety. What, yeah, what I like about going this with, is background, right? Yeah, like, yeah, just like, he's, yeah, yeah. He's he's a former marine. Guys, guys in line with all his gear. And yeah. I think the beauty um, with him is that he can basically go with whatever level you're at. Yeah. Okay. He's gonna whether take you're your, a first timer or whether you're an eighty year old awesome, man yeah. going out there, so, so he'll it. take you where you need to go based on your level. And I mean, and not only will he just ask you, but he'll just he'll absorb. literally just yeah. observe yeah. you, yeah. you know. And he he's did that watching, with me, you know. Yeah. We went, yeah. I kayak, you know, tournament with him, and you can tell he took it a little easy, you know, because he knew who, like, <laughs> Come and, on. yeah, I was like, I'm, I'm, and, first I'm pulling and, the and he says too. that he says that because we've done. Gunner and I in the fishing tournaments, we've done 30 mile round, round trips, 30 miles. Wow. You know, we did like I definitely need a, need a hobby for that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we did like 15, maybe, you know, but luckily we got on fish quick. So he does that's have the thing a, is that he'll get you there. He does have a YouTube a YouTube uh, page. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Gunner, exactly. I don't remember the name of it, but if you find him, man, uh, he's we'll going to put a link to it down below. Here videos. We, right the biggest notes. thing is that, I mean, just, just to go with somebody who's going to be knowledgeable of safety, make sure they're reputable and, and just know their background. And, and Gunner and I have had conversations like, his YouTube channel will teach you exactly who he is. And yeah, you know, it looks easy and stuff like that, but we need to realize he's paddling 20 there's, miles. There, there's, a, there's a pass you to know? get to where he's at. So yeah, you can see that whole story, right? You yeah. can't just look at one, yeah. you know, 30 second. If you clip saw, and... if you saw the glimpse at the 430 yeah. shot, where you're pulling the kayak off the boat. Yeah. And then, like you said, and then finally, right? And then finally <laughs> wetting the line at 830. You're like, man, what the heck's going on? <laughs> There's a lot that led up to that yeah, point. Right? Yeah, that's a guy, man, that every single video I've seen from him, He's wearing his life jacket. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I'm not going to lie. When I kayaked, I would wear it. And then I would take it off. And then if I was going back and the wind picked up, I put my life jacket on. But every damn video I've seen, got a life jacket on. And you know and what? I'm, I'm not trying to plug him or anything. But he also has one good story where he didn't have it on. With the with the, the, the soul, soul skip. skip. Yeah, he told me about where that. He didn't have it on. And and then he says it. It almost cost him his life. Yeah, it's perspective, right? Yeah. Like having yeah. that con, like oh man. I think he sold the solo skip, right? Yeah, he, he sold it shortly after. Yeah, he was like, I got a solo skip. I sold the solo skip. So one of my coworkers was actually looking at buying one of these Hobies, and I can't remember, or maybe the Pro Am or whatever, or a solo skip. So so someone who's making Pro Angler, Pro Angler, Pro Angler. Okay, yeah. Pro Am. That's as Pro. That's pro, the Pro Am lures. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're, you're on another level there. <laughs> uh, so, so the Pro Angler and and a solo skip. So like. What advice would you give to someone who's trying, who's contemplating those? Oh man, I can tell you this. I always wanted a solo skiff because what, what, I wanted why, until why. You got because a I didn't want to get tired. Until That's you got why. A until you got That's a really why I didn't want to get. I didn't want. I wanted to be able to go and then come back without being like, damn man, you know, I'm tired. That's the only reason. For, for because you can after. get, <laughs> yeah, you can in a in a kayak. You can get any. I mean, you can get anywhere, anywhere as long as you have stamina. As long as you're able to. You know, 
know your your limits, you can get anywhere, right? But with the with the solo skiff, it's a boat. It's gas powered. Yeah, yeah, you're good. It's a boat. You I mean you're going what 15, 20 miles an hour? I mean it's a it's, it could be dangerous. They're they're awesome. And I've seen a bunch of guys out there with them, and it's I always see them. And I was like, man, I wish I had one. But I think I, I would probably do what Gunner did, have one, use it. Then you said you had one, and then and you said, <laughs> like, check yeah. that box. And just, I, think, yeah. I think it depends on everything because there's. I mean, I've been following some guys. There's two or three guys here in the valley that yeah. have them, and then they're and great, then, and they, they look very refreshed when they come out of the water. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but you have to have that boating experience. I feel probably, like they yeah. They're right. very fun. They yeah. are. Uh, I've been in one, uh, driven one. They're pretty cool. Uh, you have to wait till daybreak to get on the water. There's you can't get on before before light, which in a kayak, man. Uh, there's been a couple of times I leave my house at 12:45 a.m. and I fish from. <laughs> yeah, from like last week, no. Yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah I, I, going fishing hey, at go? midnight. <laughs> yeah, yeah no a- anybody that was like, you uh, talking about tomorrow? No, I'm going right now. <laughs> yeah, Victor messages me at like one o'clock. He's like, "Are you seriously going fishing?" I'm like, "I send him a picture of 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 poor, man, of, of yeah. poor Mansfield." I was just getting there. It's like, damn, dude, yeah, so, that's um, crazy. Yeah, man. I just got fished. that addiction. Man. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, I fished from. Uh, I think it was. I had a, a prior engagement the next day, but I fished from. I think one in the morning till seven in the morning. Wow. What I was wondering was this. I was like, did his wife go on a vacation? <laughs> <laughs> okay, my wife ain't going to let me go. Right, she's hey, she, yeah, uh, you wait for her. Uh, that's shit, right? and, that's, and that's the pure genius of it is that I had to wait till she used. I stayed there with her. We, we relaxed. I was here this whole set, time, baby. Set tequila. Set tequila. I was awake. I was awake when she got home. Like if I had to finish wait chores. Wait up next to her with his life jacket on. What was this? Why do you smell like fish? I was like, you're crazy, Rudy, man. But it went, I mean, it went well. I mean, I know a couple of guys that have done it before. Um, I do it often. Um, fishing the, the, the pier lights at night is amazing fun. It's it's great fun. So so, uh, so I think, Victor, you mentioned that you had a, a trolling motor on your Oh, kayak. I did too, yeah. Oh, so both of you guys yeah. did. So, so it sounds like, you know, you kind of already explained why you did it, right? So it's this idea of, you know, not having to pedal or pedal, yeah. pedal, whatever, uh, depending on which kayak you're on. <laughs> Sorry, I, I know. It's a, like, horrible, yeah. it's a horrible, it's a horrible area to touch base yeah, on. I was about to I, say that, that there's battles on, you know, a paddle is better than a pedal. And the no, I, I, Dan, they used to make this kayak, man. It was called the Torque. Remember the Torquedo, the torquedo from uh, Ocean Kayak? That thing was sweet, man. Oh, that had is that already came with the motor. Okay, they right? and now the they make they make them again. Yeah. I mean, not that particular one, but I believe uh, Jackson Kayak has one now that you yeah. can switch. It's like a water where you can put it in the same place where yeah, you have the, yeah, the, yeah, the, the hobby. Right? Yeah, they yeah. make an adapter for the hobby. For yeah, I seen right? that. Yeah. Right, so the torpedo was pretty cool. It was uh, it was an awesome kayak. I rented it a couple of times from uh, from UB Captain, and it was awesome. But anyways, I had a, a Cuda. I had a Cuda fourteen. Uh, it's 14 and a half feet long, very slim. And I wanted to put a trolley motor on it. So I went and bought a trolley motor. What kind of trolley motor do you buy? On I, it? I think like I got like a 50, like a 50. That's what I had. Thrust. I had a 50 like thrust a mini Coda, Coda, little mini Coda, Coda salt right. water. And then I went with the Marine battery in the middle and I had the space for in the middle and it was great. You know, going out there the first time is like, hey, hell yeah, this thing is awesome. Until you forget to recharge. <laughs> yeah. You don't have an alternator <laughs> on your bike. Yeah. Yeah. Then you go out there and your battery dies. And that is not good. Yeah, you I, cannot I, move, man. And, 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 and he says that uh, like nicely because if you're familiar with Port Mansfield, I was at the weather station one time and my trolling <laughs> motor went out. Yeah. And, and I'm then, like, well, that's when TJ comes by and pick you yeah, up. No. <laughs> yeah, TJ and I weren't friends at the time. We sat in the sand. I was I, I was a lonely just, angler. He, he, you were waving at him. He just said, hey, oh, see you man. later. <laughs> it, it was a horrible ride back. Uh, and the thing what? about it is I didn't learn. Then I got the flat stalker. And he put and another and trolley put motor. A trolley motor on that thing too. So that thing comes already, you're know, ready for a trolley motor. So there's a compartment that you, and, and it's got a center console basically that you can slide all the way back wherever you want it because of your weight and height. And you put the battery in there and you put a trolley motor. And they're super cool. Tell you run out of battery. And I ran out of battery. That one ran out of battery. That sucked. Just because like, but you Dude. ran out of battery because you literally didn't charge it. Uh, well, the thing that about it is, when you have a motor, hours. when yeah, you have yeah, saying, when you have a motor, point, you yeah. push yourself more and more yeah. and more, and then you gotta realize you still gotta go back, and that's really when you need it. Yeah, it's to get your ass back. Yeah, there's a, there's been a couple times where I, I think if you're gonna use a trolley motor, I think the best bet is to paddle to your destination. Yeah. Okay. And troll back. Okay. Yeah. Um, Especially with the wind and the rain. Yeah, I, I I I'm if I can give any advice to anybody that that does have a trolley motor now, uh, looking back on situations that I put myself in. I would paddle 
the furthest distance that I wanted to go. If I can paddle to the spot that I want to go and I know that I'll have enough battery to come back, you know, but if you're using your battery to get to your spot and then you don't like that spot and you want to go to a different spot that's, <laughs> that's not it. close by, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to drop that thing on five and you're going to be hauling yeah. ass really real good. And, 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 uh, until that five feels like a one and you're like, man, I got to get back. And that happened to me one time. I was, there was a storm coming in. So I the L5. <laughs> and I, I luckily I made it back, man. I and then one time too on my kayak at at, uh, at uh, Holly Beach. I don't know if I was fishing with you, but dude, this I didn't check the weather, so important check the weather. <laughs> and I went out kayaking, and a storm rolled in. Yeah, dude, and I paddled as fast as I could. Didn't make it, and and I I got. I mean, I just I made it, but I didn't have time to put the kayak away. Literally, I pushed the kayak under my jeep, and I got in the jeep, and it was just like pouring for like thirty <laughs> minutes. And then I was like, what do I do when I get out? And I was like. Go fishing. <laughs> I'm here, so I might yeah. as well. So. Have you ever heard of the that it says do not don't do is that tamarack? Tamarack. The tamarack. Is that is tamarack's a, a trolley motor or is it a type oh, of kayak or a, I've never heard I've of never tamarack. Heard of that. I've never heard. I wouldn't be able What's to that say ski? about it. Uh, fishing uh, magician 2.0. If, if you could talk a little bit more about that, I I don't know what a tamarack yeah. is. So so I cannot know. Hey, what's up, Alec? Yeah, it might How's just it be regional and kind of what we're doing around here, but it seems like like we use a lot of the the the, the Pelicans and the the Hobies and what other yeah. brands out there are there? Yeah, like I said, ocean, the ocean, a bunch of brands. Ocean wilderness. Kayak, uh, ocean kayak's a great kayak. Um, I used to own two. I own two Wilderness. I own the Tarpon One Hundred, the Tarpon One Twenty. Um, great kayaks. Um, extremely fast on the water. I, I think. I, I took TJ Boom out to the 956 kayak tournament. He was on a kayak with me fishing the tournament. What was that right? Uh, and he was he was he was keeping up with the guys on the Hobies paddling that wilderness. You know, they're they're pretty good at cutting water. Yeah. So so TJ saying, yeah, it's a kayak. So we're just we're not familiar with it. It's from a lifetime brand. And so we just, uh, okay. we just don't have any experience with it. I mean, I don't have any experience with kayaks, whatever. So I think yeah. going to Bass Pro Shop, what are you gonna buy? Ascend. Ascend. Yeah. yeah. A 128. I think those yeah. are in the academy. The, the pelican, uh, pelican, pelican or a pescador. Yeah, you know the, the pelicans have made some nice kayaks. Now they're, they're not they're, they're, they're not they're, as bad as yeah. they used to be. They're uh, the evolution upgraded. of kayak fishing is is yeah. grown so much, um, and that's why Hobie has done their best to stay ahead of Keep the game. Them. Okay, yeah. um, man, their attachments and stuff, like you say, for if if you're gonna be able to to, to have the money, that thing has access for everything. So, so when you put a trolling motor, do you have to register your Absolutely, boat? Absolutely. Okay, yes. so now you have an additional. Just, yeah. You know, there's <laughs> more expenses, and you have to have your numbers. You have to have your updated information because if you do get pulled over by the game warden, which is very, very possible, the first thing they're going to ask is about the registration and, and running lights. You need them when you start putting. Yes. Yep. So, so it's not just putting a trolling motor on there. It's like it's a, now it's you're like, a, now you're you're a motorized. Now you're on a yeah, boat, you're, right? You're, you're, yeah. You're, and I and I've seen some pro anglers that they have like a five horsepower. Yeah. Oh wow! Damn, man. Yeah, they, put, the put a, bags. they put a fiberglass mount, and and I've seen some oh, guys wow. that, that crazy <laughs> with a jack plate. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it's plastic, but it'll work. Uh, so, so last thing I want to touch uh, talk about here, guys, and so, so, and and I guess this would be more to Victor and, and kind of get get Rudy's thoughts on it as well too. But uh, so you start off with uh, you know, so so you start off with a kayak. Uh, some of these guys here are kind of just getting into it. Maybe like Aaron's kind of too young to own a boat. Uh, one of the guys says here that he he doesn't have enough money to buy a boat. He loves to fish and he wants to get into a kayak. So it seems like financially, it's kind of there's Absolutely. it's one of the, it's kind of a, it's kind of one way to step your fishing game up. Yeah. Uh, to, to to the next level. Uh, and then you kind of keep doing that. And, and then kind of what I see like uh kind of where people part ways is like you have like people like uh like Rudy and, and Gunner that are passionate about kind of the kayaking and like, Hey, I don't, I don't care to be, or I don't want to say, I don't care. I don't know. I don't want to put words in his mouth, but, and then you have people like Victor, like say, no, you know, okay, I did this, check this box. And I'm going on to, to a boat. So, so kind of what's your perspective on there? What you ever go to a boat? Well, I've got, I've got access to both. My best friend, TJ, uh, runs a 24 foot dargle. So, yeah. Hey Rudy, let's go fishing. I'm taking my kayak. <laughs> okay. We'll just put the kayak on the boat. <laughs> And and that's the best. I'm telling part. you, bro, they cheat. That's the <laughs> that's best. That's that the best part is. And it's just because you like enjoy being on the kayak, or because you just... the interaction. The interaction with nature is different to me. Um, okay. Sitting on the water, fighting the fish, uh, feeling the brute power of a, of a redfish. Yeah, just kind of pulling you like around. It, if you've ever caught an overslot on a kayak, you yeah. know what I'm talking about. I mean, no, no. an overslot's going to take you, and, it, and 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 it's going to take you. Yeah, there's going to keep taking there's you. There's times where you like, oh, I had a, a stakeout pole, 
and it had a uh, a lanyard with a with a floppy on it. And there's times when you gotta you gotta you detach that, that, and your your stick up is there. And you're going, man. Yeah, you're going for a ride. <laughs> you're going for a ride. And, and it's a Texas sleigh ride. Everybody everybody oh, looks awesome. everybody looks for it. That's what it's know. called a Texas sleigh ride. Yeah, yeah. Texas sleigh rides. There's no better feeling. Wow. Yeah, definitely. Just give so, me an idea for. <laughs> so, so on the, time, man. there you go. Put, put Rudy in a Santa suit, and, and with it like hold it on, man. just hold it on for your life. The rod just leave it So one of the reasons why I I went away from the kayaking was family. Okay, you know I wanted to start taking my kids, my wife, and that's a di- that's a difference. You know I take my son out. I do have a wilderness, or it's actually a, a pescador, but it's wilderness mold a tandem kayak, and I still have that one. Um, and I took my son in a couple of times and he liked it. He enjoyed it. Right. But he's a, he was a kid. He yeah. wasn't going to help me out. You know, it's different on a boat. It's, it's a whole different thing when it comes down to taking, is. when it takes to, uh, to taking somebody out. But when you're in a kayak, it's, it's, it's on a one-on-one you go in a kayak. If you catch three trout, four trout, it's a victory. That's a victory, man. But a you big, go in a boat, a big victory. You know, you go in a boat <laughs> and you, and you, you know, you gassed up 60, 50 bucks and, and you go catch one trout or two trout, you know, you can be like, damn, man. Not a victory. Yeah. You know, it's like, damn, it hurt. Right? And, and then you get into the, what, why, what's the reason why you're going out there fishing, which we can get into. And it's not about the quantity of fish. It's about just having but, a dang good time out there. Yeah. So, so Getting tired like, and spending money. Hell yeah. <laughs> like, one, one of the things I learned about Victor here, about kind of his kayaking, fishing, and one of the big differences, even if you're in a boat, right? Let's say you have the means to do both, right? And so what Rudy was talking about here today was when you're trolling or whatever, and as you're paddling, like let's say you have a plan to go somewhere, right? And you're going, you're going on that spot, and you're paddling or you're paddling, and you're but you're fishing on along that way, right? And so you may ne- you, you may never even make it to your spot because you find the fish on your way out there, right? Yeah, it's happened plenty of Where, times. Whereas you're on a boat, you're like, no, we're going here, oh, and, yeah, we're going, and, and then you're just scaring all the fish yeah. away. You don't even you know, right? And then you find speaking. your spot, yeah. and you're like, they're they're not here. All right, let's go to let's run to my other spot. Then you run over a school of fish again. Yeah, and you never right. you, you never get that opportunity to see it out there, right? So so I think that's like a big. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I'll tell you what, any day of the week I say, hey, Victor, let's go kayak fishing. I have access to your hobby. <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah see, all, listen, my listen, old old bag team has it. See how it kind of changed. He sends me pictures and stuff. And I'm like, I'll damn, you're rude. I'll send the pictures of me laying down in his own fire. <laughs> Whenever you want to go, and I'm just there like. Talking about that, about getting, there's there's times when me and, and Rudy and another guy that we used to kayak, he also got into a boat, uh, Ray Ortega. We used to say, okay, we're going to go, we're going to go to West Bay. We didn't even make it to West Bay. We already limited out on trial. Yeah, we're calling each other like, hey, hey, come, just, just come, come over here. Every way. cast, every boom, cast, boom, we catch boom, you, man. Every cast. Yeah. You know, and, and, and yeah, it was so much fun doing that. Yeah. So, it's all right, guys. So, I, I mean, we gave a lot of information here. We showed people kind of what, what entry level kayaks to get into, kind of how long, you know, three, four years before uh, you guys made that plunge to take the next level. Uh, any closing thoughts around anything we didn't touch on that you guys want to touch base on? Um, uh, it's just one thing that I think it's it's very important when you're out in the water is again safety. Yeah, you know kayaking is is it's a very it's a sport or it's a, a part of fishing that gets you on a one on one with that fish. Uh, it's it's having your own personal boat. You're your own captain. You're your own captain when you're on the kayak. You control that kayak. You control where you're going. You control how you're fishing. But it's very easy to forget that Mother Nature is there and they don't discriminate. In charge. They don't discriminate. You no, know, it can take you. It don't matter if you're Rudy and you're, or you're a gunner or you're a beginner. Don't matter. All you can do is control what you can, and, and that's going to be wearing your life jacket. Yep. Very important. Wearing your life jacket. Well, being was, prepared for anything. There was a guy, and I, I don't know the details. I remember reading about it on, on Facebook or somewhere that you know he his they found his kayak flipped over on, on the beach, and then the, the the coast guard was able to rescue him. Uh, because he was wearing his life jacket, he, he had drifted maybe two, three miles. From oh, where that's his kayak that, was that's at. very common. Yeah, that's and there was common. a guy about two years ago at Holly Beach who obviously he, he lost his life. You know, he wasn't he was wearing a life jacket. He wasn't wearing a life jacket. Uh, another another thing, guys. Um, that don't don't, don't drink. Yeah. You're gonna go kayaking. Yeah, you know, guys, that don't mix. Um, yeah. I used to be the guy that 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 wanted to take a six pack or twelve pack on my kayak and just go pull down. It's not worth it. Um, once you start fishing, you start getting active in, in into the fishing. In the sun, man. Yeah, it, it kicks your ass. Completely yeah. Level, yeah. Right? You're, you're, It'll, it's, it's physically it, demanding. And then it takes away from your judgment. Your judgment yeah. calls you like, ah, I can make it to that <laughs> island. Yeah, the island looks so close. <laughs> it really does. You have no idea that you that have no idea underneath. that it's four miles away, yeah. and you're yeah. going into a current into the wind. Yeah, you know. So 
you know, another good spot that, that we used to fish a lot. Um, and that's, I'm going to say, is more when you get a little bit more into kayaking. And it's a really good spot. It's San Martin. Oh, man. Um, it's a really good spot to Where fish. Where is San Martin? San Martin in is in Brownsville. It's Highway 48. Is the Jaime Zapata Bridge. The okay. Puente de los Lobos. Puente de los Lobos. Yeah. So that's a pretty good area to go kayak. But I would honestly say that's not going to be for a beginner. If you're yeah. going to go, because the, the undercurrent there is super strong. <laughs> it's super strong. I think, I, 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 that was my biggest experience. Yeah. I, I've, taken, I've taken Fabian out, of, and 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 I'm going to be honest I, with you. There's some amazing fish in there. Oh, yeah. yeah but mm, you've got to be very careful. I took my brother-in-law, bro. He never got to even fish. He couldn't make it past the, past the under the it, bridge. To get to the place to actually fish is what, three, four miles oh, yeah. it is. It, it, well just to get it depends to well it depends where... on where we're going yeah <laughs> but uh, <laughs> he was taking was you to turn around <laughs> um they, they blindfolded you and then you just open your eyes you're in the same spot yeah, he, he, he got it for four <laughs> miles he's like wait a minute yeah, you, you, did, you went in this he brought you back to the same spot my right here <laughs> yeah but we no, went but, around um, uh, that's a great fishing spot it, it, man it's, it's amazing winter oh, wow. oof I can't say too much. Yeah, I can't say too much. There, there's, I there's, said too much. There's uh, some massive fish being pulled out. Yeah. Of there. PDLI TJ Boom says, uh, take, "Yeah, <laughs> definitely." Like, um, I think that on a daily. So yeah, um, PDLI and some white piece. Yeah, <laughs> or, or, or some or some some. Hey, yeah, some baby to me, bro. Man. I ended up. You might I, make some masa, but powder. you'll be all right. I went to oh. I went to Holly Beach. I ended up coming sleeveless. And I was like, "What happened to your sleeves?" Don't ask nothing. <laughs> Don't ask nothing. That half, half a sock later, you know. <laughs> you know I'm gonna tell you, it, it's funny because I went, I went out kayaking, and my stomach started like, oh, and I'm like, damn, this ain't good. So there's a little part, uh, like the airport cove around that area, yeah. and I went in there, and then I, I beached my kayak, and I got off, and I got my rod down, pretending, and there were some kayakers there. <laughs> and by the time I got back, they were like next to my kayak, and I was like, and I was like, you oh, okay, bro? Man. We, we, saw, we saw a kayak there. Is there any fish over there? There's, there's nothing. It's not like skunk. I mean, there's skunk over there. There's nothing but shit over there. Yeah, it's all shitty over there, bro. There's a redfish telling over there. there. And uh, I was like, eh, ni modo. Save the turtles. Yeah, we're yeah. gonna save the turtles. There, you know what? Holly Beach. There's a lot of turtles, and sometimes they can scare the crap out of yes, you, bro. Yes, because you're, they're you're not they're small. fishing and boom, yeah. they're, they're not small. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. They're, they're 100, 150 pound oh, yeah, turtles. <laughs> you're like, what the hell is that? Yeah, and it moves water, and it shifts your kayak over. You're like, wait a minute. And they sneak up on you, bro. Like, they're behind you, like, just. And then they'll. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. And you're like, damn it. But, yeah, yeah, good job, son. Yeah, there is a lot of turtles out there. <laughs> yep. So it's so actually so TJ says he lost his rod. That was at my experience. And so so I went out there and I went and, and so I was paddling out there and uh and so I uh, I had and I had my buddy told me you need these short, you know, whatever the these short uh rear grips or it's getting hot in here, Sam. Yeah, I know, sorry. We're, we're we're cutting it off. It's getting it's, it's too intense in here, dude. <laughs> but uh but uh so what we so I had these short these short handles on on my uh reels or my rods and I I knocked one over when I was paddling, I reached back or whatever and it wasn't strapped in. And it starts falling down, and it's it's like a slow mo. Yeah, and like I see, it's like <laughs> it, it's waving at you as it goes down waving, to the bottom and, of the ocean. And I'm like, oh crap! And I had a stratic, right? And then so I, I was like, and then I, I I start reaching over, Whoop. and then like no, like the kayak, like I, my tackle box went was the next thing to go. <laughs> And I was all like, "Oh crap!" And at that point, I realized it's not worth it. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and I was just like, "Nope, I'm not." And then I just got like, "Oh well, that's I parted ways with that." But uh, I walked away, and it was actually in a deeper part of it. Otherwise, you know, would have. And, and, and the same thing happened. Go to sleep, son. And Go the to same sleep. Thing happened to TJ. He, one of his rods fell in the water, and he just reached back to grab it. And as soon as he reached back, the whole kayak turtled. Yeah, and yeah, you he gotta was be swimming. careful out there. Yeah, and he was swimming. Yeah. yeah, and I think that's one thing. Like as as a new beginner, I mean, it, it, or as someone getting into it, right? You got to know, like, hey, it's not worth, you know, t losing something, you know, or, or getting hurt trying yeah. to to chase and down and a rock. Drop his costas. Yeah, so. he dropped his costas. <laughs> one thing we haven't touched on, and that that I think is very important, it's to learn re-entry. Oh enter yes, kayak. absolutely. Go out there and flip your. So don't take your gear. Yeah, don't take go your with gear. A dry kayak yeah. and flip it. And flip it. Don't yeah, flip it also on the when channel. We say, when we say flip yeah. it, we mean turtle it. Yeah. Uh, completely upside down, shell the bottom of the kayak facing up. Yeah. Have your life jacket on. Learn, <laughs> learn how to turn your kayak yeah. onto its onto its right side, and learn how to get up back on your kayak. Okay. Um, a lot of kayakers get stuck because they cannot get back on their kayak. Um, and then, it, I mean, I imagine unless you're, like it's just drifting away from you too, right? I yeah, mean, so like, and and, and the, you know, that's that's another issue. If you're not anchored down, you're never gonna catch your kayak in a current. Put a leash on your paddle. Yes, 
and that way tie to flip, yourself and uh, to tie yourself to the, the boat. I used, I used to tie it to the boat. I wouldn't yeah. tie it to myself. I tied it to the boat. Um, I only flipped over once, and it was it was my mistake. I actually was standing up on my kayak, and I saw some red, and I tried to anchor, and I put my uh, my stack up pole in front of the kayak. So of course the kayak went with the current, and it flipped over. But I mean, you fall out of boats. Pretty. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw that. Hey, a good one, Sam. It, it, was, it, it, it was worth the shot. Yeah, yeah, it's all for the. Uh, yeah, it, it was. It was all. It was off whatever. The was off the turn. The funny thing is, I was falling and I sent my hand out to uh, freaking Edgar. And he and he, no, 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 bro. Like this. Look, I was like. Hey, he grabbed the rod. <laughs> you, got, you have a red diamond. Yeah, he the blended rod. the red, and I, I was like, I'm ready in the water. Might as well, uh, <laughs> might as well record, man. <laughs> Took the GoPro out, and I got some good video and some good pictures. From that it, man. Yeah, check out Victor's uh, Facebook video. Actually, he might put it on YouTube. Too. I, did, I cut, I cut half of it because I started. I got pretty excited. I, so, so I get really excited. You know, when I when I go fishing with somebody, it's I'm passion. not, I'm not, a, I'm not a guy. You know, I just sometimes I'll be, I'll put it on Facebook. You know, people make fun of me. They put the damn meme of another guy hugging another guy. <laughs> And I put there that I'm going fishing if anybody wants to go with me, but I love when people catch fish. Yep. When I take, when I go with somebody, man, I don't care if I don't catch fish. My friends catching fish gets me super pumped, like pumped, man. Like in my video, I'm like, yeah, like, <laughs> you know, and the guys that caught it, they're like, oh, good fish. And I'm like, get on my boat. Get on my boat. <laughs> but that's just the kind of person that I am. I took this, this guy, I had to hit him up on Facebook and we went and uh, he, he landed a really nice uh, a red on a top water, and I jumped off the boat with my GoPro, with my phone actually. Jumped off the boat, and I went underwater, and I took pictures and video. And he was like, "Damn, bro, you're crazy, man!" <laughs> and I was, he's like, you know, usually I fish with people, and and they see me catch something, and they want to cast out, and maybe there's something else. Because you put your rod down, got your phone, went in the water, and took a damn video. <laughs> but for me, it was just, yeah, yeah, I was excited, it's, dude. It's all the experience, man. yeah, it's man. Just like, oh, and it's, it's stuff like that gets people interested and get them out of the water. At the end of the day, it's we want fun, people man. to enjoy it, man. Even it's when fun. I skunk out, I have fun. I went yeah. Sunday. Sunday, I went with my son. I put some videos on there. We fished maybe 30 minutes. I was yeah. flying my drone. <laughs> Unfortunately, I ran out of battery and my drone ended up in the water. <laughs> uh, I did ca- I did get the drone, but I haven't turned it on. So hopefully, you it's show if any of you guys have any tips <laughs> on how to fix that, you know, yeah, hit me up, man. I went more fast. So uh, put some tips out there. Victor's uh, he's putting it in rice and cooking it in the <laughs> oven, and dude, he's reading all these superstitions and, and yeah, trying to figure so, out how to save it. So uh, being out there with my rice, yeah, right. <laughs> being out there with my son, he's like, Yeah, let's just let's get in the water. So I said, go for it. So he got in the water, and uh, I I was in the tower and I was casting a little bit and i just say you know what let's just have fun and i yeah. didn't catch any fish man i did fish maybe 30 minutes i didn't catch any fish but i was enjoying having the day out there with my I, son I, and he I got did. to drive my boat too oh, yeah. and you, you were teaching him the safety thing yeah. right you were teaching yeah. him so I, I mean at the end of the day i i consider that trip a success right i mean it's not I, I tell a lot of people to, you know, for me personally, like some of my, he bought me, he bought me ice cream after the trip. So that's <laughs> <what I'm talking laughs> about. Like, like some of my fondest memories, like just like the relationships you build with your, with your parents, with your kids, whatever. And like, I, that's what I remember, like me, me and my cousins, whatever, going and spending the weekend out there and, and just like bonding, <clears throat> like whatever. And there's a lot to that. Right. And that's more important than the fish you catch or whatever. It's just being out on the water and you can't, I mean, you're almost forced to talk and have these conversations or like yeah. whatever. And, and it's just, our last uh, podcast was about safety, boat safety. Yep. So I, I, you know, we had we sat here with uh, uh, Dunks, right? Captain Dunks. Captain right. Dunks. And I got a chance to to share with my son what I had learned from Captain yep. Dunks. And I, I told him, you know, you have to have because he doesn't like to wear his lab jacket. You know, he's twelve years old. And I told him, I believe Dunks said at third when you're when you're older 13. than thirteen, then you right. don't have to wear it anymore. Yeah. Until then, uh, so you have to wear it. So make sure. And then he was driving, so I make sure he, he had to put the the, the lanyard, lanyard and right, what yeah. it was for. So it was cool explaining to my son, this is the reason why you got to do these things on a boat. Right. Uh, and I learned that at the podcast that we did. Uh, the last yeah, so one. if you guys had to check it out, check it out. It's uh, We'll link it down below. It's basically we sat down with Captain uh, James Dunks from uh, the Game Warden uh, Chief here in, in South Texas. And he was explaining what the new fishing regulations were, yeah. some of the new changes, as well as uh, specifically around boat safety. And, and kind of really, you know, these, these, these boating safeties, they're not just people trying to enforce these, um, you know, irrelevant type rules right they're they're, they're based off people stories and incidents and accidents that have occurred that have occurred and i think we're gonna have another one with with the uh, captain right we uh, are gonna have where we talk about kayak safety as well Ooh, not yeah, just boat so, safety but kayak safety yeah that's, so, so that's definitely right. just try to keep it out there i mean uh, but these guys definitely know what they're doing between them and gunner and uh, there's a lot of people out here yeah. manny uh just you just keep watching them and keep, keep out there so 
so I really want to thank you guys for coming in here. I know it's getting late. It's getting warm in here. This, there's definitely a problem here with this air conditioner. It kind of pushes and it gets, it gets cold hot. But anyways, uh, but definitely thank you guys for coming in here and sharing your knowledge and, and sharing your experiences and as well as giving our viewers uh, some tips on how to get started. Definitely. I mean, you can just see the long list of questions. People are interested and yeah. want to get into it. Uh, this we is, appreciate it, guys. Yeah. We appreciate y'all being active with the yeah. with their uh, podcast, and we're all here. It, it by no means are me and Rudy experts. We're not, you know. But we're just avid fishermen that've gone and, out there in a kayak, and we can tell you a little bit of hey, and the thing this is, is what we did. The thing is, you're going to find people like Rudy and Victor, like all all across the fishing community, right? Yeah. People that are willing to help, and they're not doing it for themselves. They're not monetizing this in any way. It's just that they really enjoy. I didn't even have dinner, bro. <laughs> this is Victor's dinner, so yeah. I'm not getting on my own. I got, I got some tamales. <laughs> oh, lucky you, bro. That's the big I, real for you. <laughs> I think you know Sam and I are taking on this endeavor of, of this podcast because I mean I think we've talked about it a lot. Is that the people who have helped us are willing to help others? Yeah. And I think when we all started, that that help wasn't always there, yeah. you know. And and I think when I first started, you know, or really got into it, you know, there was people like like Rudy and Gunner that opened their arms and said, hey. What do you need? Yeah. You know, and I think this is, we're trying to give this back to the public. To Absolutely. Community. It's like, Hey, you know what, whatever you need to know, we're going to tell you because like I've told him many times, you know, Rudy's told me, Gunner's told me, I'm going to teach you everything I need to teach you, but you got to do it. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day, you're you gonna have apply. to apply. Yeah. At the, at the end of the day, you, you, know? you may paddle the, the 13 miles with me and you may have every color of AM lore that I have that, that Victor <laughs> gave me or that I got, um, but you're ultimately still going to have to throw your rod in yep. the water yep. and, and make it move. I yep. think that's going to make a, a really good, you know, a, a podcast, you know, just throwing that knowledge out there and ask us whatever you want. And I know these guys are willing to help you, you know, get there and, 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 and get to the experience and get to the level that they are. You know, I think it's really awesome to, to see that. And so, for any of you guys that are watching and, and you're, you haven't gotten out in the water, you have your kayak and you don't know where to go. Hit me up on, on, on Facebook Messenger. Let me know. Like, hey, Rudy Celedon. Rudy Celedon. Yeah, how do you spell your last name, Rudy? C E L E D O N. Okay. So so reach out to Rudy. Or yeah, you can call Victor here I'm, with any questions I'm you have. Always, so. always willing to take you guys out and just go out there and see who can catch what, you know. Yeah. So no, definitely, guys, thanks again for coming here. We know we ran a little bit late like we did. Uh, again, this will get chopped up and put into our uh, a podcast and try to keep the podcast. The I'm not done, it. Sam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. No, I know, but we'll, we'll, we'll continue it <laughs> the next time. But but definitely. My uh, wife just texted, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she said your son's telling you to go home. But, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, definitely. So And like Fabian said, we're going to continue doing this. I mean, Fabian and I, we, we've been blessed to do kind of what we do. We've... Uh, We've, we've met a lot of people in this fishing community, Rudy, Victor as well. And everyone, I mean, one thing I really admire, one thing I really love about kind of what we do is uh, and, and you take two complete strangers like you two guys and you just talk about fishing and it's like a brotherhood and it's yeah. something associated. Like you guys can talk for hours and it's like trying to get you guys to shut up. That's, <laughs> that's the hard part. That's the hard part. Do we get to talk? You guys, do we get to talk too? Uh, do we step out? <laughs> Yeah, you know, you go to these dinners and like you go with my wife and then, uh, you know, and then like, it'll be my wife's friend and her husband and we, and we don't know each other. It's like, uh, you know, I can't talk to this guy, right? whatever. It's not, there's something, there's nothing there, but he says something about fishing. Like, oh shit, like that. Game on. It's like, game was like best friends. And like, then at the end of the day, like, or like our wives are ready to go. It's like, no, we're still. Uh, we're not done we're yet. Not done. Y'all can go. Yeah, we're barely at the Arroyo. We haven't even made it to the yeah. island yet. Because <laughs> everybody has stories. Everybody yeah. has passion. Everybody, whatever it is or, or whatever it is, people are uh, just something about uh, fishing or whatever your passion is that when you have two people that have the same thing uh, on that is uh, re really connected. And that's really what this podcast is specifically for people with the fishing uh, passion. And then, uh, and then kind of a, a shameless plug of kind of with the seven day addiction. And oh so, man, it, it's definitely an addiction. Yeah. When, when, you, when you're willing to, to call in and say, I'm, uh, I'm not going to be there today. We're, we'll be on the other line. <laughs> I don't know what he's talking about, bro. <laughs> he's already scratching. He's already itching. But I think on that, um, that's a good transition, you know, to to kind of plug what we're gonna do um, in the future. You know, maybe not through Palo fishing, but right, it'll be a separate podcast. It'll be yeah. through Seven Day Addiction, and Thursday will be our first one, guys. Just to kind of, you know, a lot of the fishermen and outdoorsmen are very in tune with what we're gonna do next on Thursday. And on Thursday, we're gonna go ahead and talk about uh, competition grilling. You know, actual cooking. I know uh, Victor does. A I lot do of competition that. eating. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell, bro. <laughs> so uh, if y'all need somebody to help you out, I got you, know, you, bro. He's just fasting right now. <laughs> he's saving up. He's... <laughs> so uh, Thursday, we are going to have uh, two competition teams that have helped uh, Seven Day Addiction quite a bit, and that's Chilling and Grilling and uh, Sons of Smoke. These two competition guys 
our teams have, have done amazingly well. And I think Thursday is going to be an extremely good podcast. Again, it is going to be through seven day addiction podcast. Um, but again, it's going to go back to that. You know, I had never been in that world and I kind of got into it because of these guys and it is a culture. It is something completely different. You think fishing is, you know, as, as passionate as we are about it, that cooking world, that competition world, it's another culture and it's, it, it is a passion. It is an addiction for these yep. guys yeah. and uh, we're yeah. going to bring them in. Absolutely. And that's, that's really going to be the framework for the seven day addiction exactly. podcast is. And so, so all, all of us here are, are passionate about the outdoors, fishing and, and hunting. Uh, there's people that, 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 that doesn't interest them, right? There's people that want to like barbecue or, or like chilling and grilling. Like the guys are going to be here on Thursday. Yeah. There's people that are passionate about jumping out of planes. There's people that are passionate about, uh, going to work. Going to work. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Everyone yeah. has their own addiction. And everyone has their own addiction. And that's yeah. really what the whole seven day addiction podcast is, is really to talk to people who have these passions about these different, whatever it may be, uh, music, um, uh, skateboard, whatever it may be. Right. So, so it really just talk and learn about Jeeps. This. So, Dude, oh, not, dude. Oh, uh, culture, bro. When I had my G, bro, oh, no, no, I had there's, 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 there's all. Yeah. I mean, hey, man. Or you're walking away like this. Look, this is how you walk away from a Jeep. Look. Nope. Nope. Like, you just look back at it, bro. It's just look back at it. <laughs> just like, walk away. I want to so, put new so, tire. I want to put some armor on that tire. <laughs> No, nah, bro. Yeah, tell me, I had a G, bro, and I was like, I, when I, I miss it. I miss yeah. my G, but yeah. So, so, if you guys have any addictions, uh, um, put the comment down below. Again, we talked about some of the ones we're going to be working on, but we'll be uh, we'll be doing the same format with a, a yeah. bunch of different people. If you have the wrong kind of addiction, we can help you out. <laughs> <laughs> we get the right direction. We can, we can point you in that right direction. So, we can have you <laughs> so, so again, thanks for all of you guys that stay tuned, man. We ran uh, we ran pretty late. We yeah, we did. For, uh, 145, but. Uh, Thanks for you guys on YouTube uh, that stayed all the entire time. Definitely all the questions, all the engagement. So we definitely appreciate that. Uh, and then any of you guys that are listening on the podcast, the audio part of it, thanks for listening. Uh, if you haven't already uh, subscribed to our YouTube channel, we're going to be putting these out a few times a week. I'm actually be traveling here pretty soon. So we'll, they'll try to figure out how we're going to work that. Uh, might just be audio, but uh, but none, nonetheless, uh, we're going to continue putting out here. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so specifically, uh, Put any comments around any of uh, any of the passions people are out there, as well as any kind of fishing topics that you got, would like for us to discuss in the future. So, and I just realized this cable's been right in front of me the entire time, so apologize <laughs> about that. So, but it's all right. I'll see what we can do. But, uh, but anyways, all right, guys, thanks again, and uh, we'll see you guys on the next one. Night. Later's. Later's. <laughs>